Uh, I will call this meeting to order at 3 o nearly 3.05 p.m. <laughs> uh, so let's do roll call. Uh, Ethan? Present. Spencer? Here. Jay? Here. All right, uh, approval of the minutes. Massive air quotes there. Uh, so I tried to be, I tried to be fairly comprehensive and fair in the construction of these, but I'm happy to make whatever changes anyone wants to make to these things. So. Cool. On first page at the bottom in um, four, change it from board of directories to board of directors meeting in the parentheses. Wait, in the parentheses. Uh, we're, oh, directories. Oh, yeah. Directors so. meeting. Are there copies, of the hard copies of these? Because I can't. Yes. yes. You have one. Uh, there. Oh. And I actually do have a much larger television that's just really heavy, and so, that, and so maybe uh, I might actually consider bringing the other one next time. I'll get help to drag well, it over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, we've, we've done that before, actually. Yeah. We did. That's yeah. <laughs> pretty good. One thing, um, one comment I have on general like minutes preparation going forward, mm -hmm. I think we should avoid, um, even though there's no, no really issue in it, as, as it takes place here, we should avoid any value judgments of... Did we make a value um, judgment in the minutes? I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's fine, but just kind of like I see at the top of page two, yeah. the most humorous part of this was that Spencer had a lot of detail on the secretary, oh, which uh, is... Yeah, I, I thought, I thought yeah, okay, I'm happy to remove that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that we have to... Yeah, I, 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 no, I, under, I understand exactly what you mean. One of the things that I try to do when, and I do this when constructing agenda items too, is I try to make it as, as like, I don't want to say like omniscient, but as... Um, neutral as possible um, and I think that the main um, like the main value that I try to keep in that is trying to avoid like speaking for any other person mm -hmm. because we could run in I, I just don't want to run into a situation where someone like for example um, like here on page okay. let's see on page three and I'm not taking issue with this don't get no, me wrong yeah. but it says one of the goals here was to adopt policies that would avoid crazy director just pulling sheets out of his backpack and only giving that was a direct a, quote. A few to the audience going forward. Yeah. So, so if it was a direct quote, you should probably cite who said the direct quote, and because we we don't get in one. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just saying we don't want to get in a situation. That's like the whole reason, at least, that I had been doing minutes where yeah. we just record motion and policy. So um, yeah. So but I mean, I think that like the the other um, kind of description of the back and forth, it can be valuable. It's just important that. Like when you're using the like the verbs and whatnot that describe like or like verbs and adjectives that describe like what people are doing like very neutral mm -hmm. language because I just don't want to get into a situation where this it becomes like a common practice and then eventually someone is like it it gets used against someone you know yeah so I, I to be clear I, I tried to be neutral as far as um, like all of the statements about the policies and mm -hmm. please. Hit me hard if I didn't, and I will fix it. I mean, even if it's just a minor nit you have, I'll fix it. Um, and the uh, the humorous part, with the thing where I said like the most humorous part of that, I figured yeah. that that was like just totally like flavor text about a conversation that it didn't actually affect any of the policy issues. And um, yeah. uh, and uh, what I was kind of doing there was is just trying to make this maybe more enjoyable for someone to bother reading through. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm happy. I've removed it from the minutes, and I will avoid doing that in the future. Um, the uh, uh, I mean, also I'm happy to. I mean, I thought that I thought the direct quote was. Again, hilarious there, but I'm happy to. <laughs> yeah. um, as, but but on the on the, the difference between action minutes and comprehensive minutes, um, one of the issues that I've had in the um, going through minutes of various other organizations, as a key example, the um, Coastal Commission only recorded no as their decision after a year and a half of deliberation on parking. 
uh, and and I and, and they don't have any record of anything else that happened. And I've yeah. talked to other people on boards here, here, and they actually were upset that they would say something during a meeting about something, and then all that was recorded was a vote. And so they they were they actually were upset about the action minutes as a board member. And so I was trying to actually allow for the the, the back and forth and the explanations of of reasoning behind here. Uh, and I tried, what I did is I just listened to the thing at 2x speed and was just frantically writing down things that seemed relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and again, I did try to be very balanced and not make value judgments on the things inside yeah. of here. Um, but I, uh, I, I, I totally believe, believe that I'm, yeah. I would fail at that. Um, oh, it's before I go to Jonathan. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's all good. And I, and I would say I commend you for wanting to like, yeah. wanting to open it up and make it easier for people mm -hmm. to follow. Because that's like a big thing I'm passionate about too, is making sure that people can like, understand exactly what we're talking about instead of just you know seeing the you know first Ethan second Spencer pass I Ethan Spencer J like that yeah. is not something that anyone's gonna want to look through that's just you know a record for us essentially and so uh, but I, I think that like going forward maybe a policy consideration and maybe I should just bring this up when mm -hmm. we talk about future items should be procedures for um, board members and members of the public requesting that something be recorded um, as a, like alongside in the minutes, like so adding stuff. To yeah, minutes. I don't think we can actually discuss that within here. I think we need to. Okay, we can. Focus. That's a very interesting point. Yeah, we actually can discuss that in item four. I think. Yeah, because we yeah, Previously absolutely. talked about minutes in item four, and we did that. So yeah, does Ethan have any comments about the minutes? Yes, yeah, so on page four, um, midway, it says Ethan pointed out Jeez. that he felt that he would not be able to just call on people okay. going forward and that he's going to start forcing people to use okay. the podium in an organized and timely fashion. I'm guessing it's forcing the least rested requesting? Fair. Asking? Yeah. Requesting? Okay. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then page two, uh, middle paragraph, Ethan explained that we have limited jurisdiction and so we did not have much power to push back against Trump. I don't think I said the second part of that sentence. Uh, you did, but I'm actually, it, it was irrelevant to the policy, so I'm happy to remove it. Okay. Uh, push back against uh, higher. Uh, so I need to push uh, to oh. Yeah, it kind of, for me, it kind of gets back to one of those things where, um, you know, and I'll, I'll read this with news articles all the time where you'll see, you'll see like something that is a completely factual news article and all the quotes in the news article are things that the person actually said, mm -hmm. but the presentation and the exclusion of certain things that the person said and the inclusion along with the way that the quote is framed within the context of the entire article, like spins it in a crazy direction. And I think in a lot of times people like, this spin isn't even intentional. I mean, sometimes it is fraud. Who sometimes it is. I mean, I, 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 this sentence, I definitely wasn't trying to spin anything against you because I, I agree <laughs> with you. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. No. And and I, and I don't oh, think yeah. that you're trying to spin anything either. It's just that we need to be mindful of that mm -hmm. because, um, I, I, I think that w the procedures. I mean, this whole committee is about procedures. The, right. the policies that we institute should be um, ones that kind of, um, you know. D Try to try to build something that's sustainable and that's going to steer away from conflict. And I do see conflict arising from something like this. Right. And in that paragraph in particular, like okay. um, it, it as was written previous to editing, it said so we did not have much power to push back against Trump. But in there, it doesn't mention like the bulk of my argument, which was about corporate powers, policing powers, and powers of taxation. Oh, like what we okay. have and what we don't. Because uh, I didn't explain what you meant by the uh, because law. I, because I, cause I, I said we did not have much power, but I didn't explain that we did not um, that uh, limited jurisdiction so and that we did not have powers of policing or just policing. We have yeah, corporate and taxation. Because um, yeah. what I was trying to what what I was saying in that, and I think Jonathan, okay. maybe if you have any input, on this was your interpretation was that we were focusing on policies that we have, which are not policing powers, but rather policies related to the internal function right, of our board. CSEs don't have police powers, right. so they won't really be in conflict. Right, so, I, so I, think, I think we're probably in a good place where we are now. Okay. okay. This also was for the next, next set of minutes that I do, I might also succeed in making it a lot more summarized and still feeling like I've actually got it. What ended up happening with this one is, is I was just like, I don't know if I'm in the, like, if I have enough mental 
if I'm too tired and too hungry and too like stressed in order to actually make value judgments about what I add and remove. So I was just like frantically throwing as much detail as yeah. I could into things. <laughs> yeah, and what I would yeah. say with that, especially like, I mean, you know, don't like overwork yourself. Like succinctness can be a front in uh, these situations. Yeah. And your wording of the the actual motions that was taken, like right from what we submitted to that was exactly what. Well, yeah, the only the only changes I made were formatting. I didn't make any text changes at all from what was uh, given to me by uh, Spencer's. Oh, yeah. So the same stuff that was in the agenda of the regular board meeting. I don't For know about that. I, okay. I took the Spencer sent me a document that included all yeah. of the things, and I took that. I, I do not know if well, there I were didn't any make any. I didn't make no. any modifications to what exactly. Okay, so I, oh, the well, one thing I did do though is I actually listened to all of the motions as stated and compared them to the text here. And so I'm pretty certain that uh, I might have missed one of them, but I'm pretty certain that I actually verified that this was what was said during the meeting. Good. Um, motion uh, on the bottom of page two: change a uh, big to being. Oh yeah, so that's the one, that's the one, and that's the one thing that we corrected when we adopted this policy Wait, at the um, board. Right now it's big. I'm bad at two. Yeah, that's the same yeah. mistake that was in the sentence three in the motion paragraph or line three rather. Yeah, and the other thing though, that I noticed while trying to listen and compare is that there was one point where I listened and looked at it and I was like, wait, I think that there was actually a mistake. And then I, so that's what happened. I listened and compared and it was the same. And then during the meeting, there was a correction made and I was like, wait, but that's not reflected here. Wait, it is. Oh my God, that, yeah, was, that yeah. means that when I was listening and comparing, I must have not noticed the mistake because we do this thing as we just automatically yeah. correct things that we're reading. <laughs> and so. Yeah, it's like where you have the the word and at the end of a sentence, and then it goes to the next line. And there's another and, and yeah. People so the so the main the main thing the main thing that I remembered as a conclusion of of my editing process mm -hmm. is that I didn't end up editing anything. That it was just exactly what Spencer sent me. So. Yeah. So I think we're uh, th those are all the corrections I have. Okay. This Sounds great. Uh, so I guess the next thing is is to uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I move to approve the minutes of this policy committee special meeting on March 16th as amended. I second. Okay, uh, roll call vote, Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. Jay? Aye. Motion passes 3-0. Uh, I should have typed this out. <laughs> That's what I should have done. Sure. So move to yeah. approve the minutes of the policy committee special meeting on March 16th as amended. Okay. And we can go back and verify in the recording. Yeah, hopefully. That's exactly I just we, there's always the possibility that some catastrophic failure ends up causing all recording to and so I just I should also be keeping the notes here of exactly what you said. Absolutely. So. And um, why I'm recording here as oh well. Good, okay, great. Okay, moving on to public comment period. Uh, this is at this time members of the public may speak on any matter under within the juris the oh. jurisdiction of the policy committee. I don't know whose mistake that was. That it's might have been. Mine. It's, I feel like <laughs> I I I <laughs> It's okay. That's funny. <laughs> Are there any members of the public oh, who would right, like to speak? Sorry. I was reading. <laughs> yes, no, I, I have to go early, so I'm going to just comment on, a, on just two things. On this sheet that Spencer passed out, uh, on board meetings B, uh, it says special meetings of the board of directors may be called by the board president or by a majority of the board members. I think it would be good to add like another sentence of like, how you'd initiate that. Like, would Natalie contact Ethan saying, I would like to board a me special meeting and then I should need a second, and yeah, et cetera, et cetera. And then, like, what the vote she needs to be to approve it, unless, uh, if you do want to do like an email vote to or something like that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, That's a good idea. And then, for, so I was, I really liked the discussion about the, like, the minutes and you know, Jay, I really agree with you. Like, you want to make this something people can understand, because just motions doesn't make any sense. You look at some other board meetings, and just motion, motion, motion doesn't. And then Spencer, you said, you know, you're into this too. So I dealt with this a little bit when I was in AS, 
Um, and because we used to have a minute structure that did describe the meeting, and then we moved to a minute structure that had just motions. And what we found as a kind of compromise between the two is creating a policy around uh, dissenting and majority opinions, where someone who is in the dissent could then write out their perspective of what happened, or if you're in the majority, you can write it out, and it could be included as part of the minutes of this, like, this is why I voted this way, and this is what I saw for this motion, so you could preserve some of that. I heard Ethan say this, and I agreed with it, and that's why I voted yes, or something like that. So you could construct the, the agenda and the minutes to have dissenting and majority opinions. That's that's interesting that you say that. Thank you for your comments, Jonathan. Um, I think that IVRPD has a policy very similar to that in their policy manual that deals mm -hmm. with. Um, I don't I don't know if it's quite dissenting and like um, concurring opinions, but it is if a director wants to record wants something in the minutes specifically recorded, the director can ask that it be specifically recorded in the minutes, and then the secretary will do it. Okay, that's great. Well, yes, I didn't know that. Um, that's, that's basically it. I, oh, one thing I do want to give you insight on the public involvement on committees. The way my board has done it has been, I mean, I don't know how I even like this, but I'm just putting this out there as how it happens with, with us. So we have to appoint public members last year to our board president, uh, or to our college president search committee. And we just, you know, we put out a call for letters of interest that you guys have talked about, had a deadline. And then all of them were read by the board as it, they were agendized. All of them they were publicly made available for everyone to read. And then we just we had to read all of them before the board meeting as we normally do. At the board meeting, we debated who we thought would be the best person. So we have a seven member board too. So it is it, I know it is cumbersome to do with seven people, but so we had to do that. Uh, but then we didn't have a way to actually pick. <laughs> that's, so we, we were like, this kind of like, should we do like a rank system? Should I, should we do like, let's just motion and see who gets the votes? So that's something to keep in mind is how does the pick actually happen, especially if a formal part of the board, is made, even if the committee's doing it, how do you pick? Like if you have 10 names, that like just because Jay made the motion to appoint this first person and then you know, everyone voted yes, but then you didn't know that Spencer wanted someone else, and Ethan wanted someone else, and now that last person kind of can't even get debated because the first two people already chose them. So figuring out something like that, because we struggled with that. And then we just ended up doing like a rank system and elimination, but it was informal, and we just kind of made it up during the meeting. Uh, so I would look into like how you would make that actual decision whenever it goes to someone. So. Yeah, I think rank choice sounds like a good idea for that. Thank you very much, Jonathan. In case you're not here when we discuss these things, I'll uh, make certain that we, I wrote down the things about future agenda items that, so that we can bring that back up as the, so that everyone, in case somebody else shows up later, can hear what you said. Cool. So, all right, moving on from public comment. Number one, uh, discuss whether to disband and ask to be reformed as ad hoc committee. During the last meeting, Ethan suggested that we become an ad hoc committee. As most of the district's work is currently being done in committee, this could allow the district to sidestep compliance with the Brown Act, which multiple board members seem to believe would be very useful for the IBCSD. As part of this agenda item, we will discuss the strategy and potentially choose to disband and ask the board to reform this committee as an ad hoc committee. Uh, so the reason why I chose the, to, to agenda this as disband and ask to be reformed is I talked to some people who were like, is it even possible for you to just ask to be an ad hoc committee, like become one? It's like, well, you'd have to like disband first, right? And so then the idea was to maybe disband and ask to be reformed, because the board would have to actually do that. Right. Um, so Ethan, since you were the person who was uh, wanted this on the agenda, can you provide more information about what your goals were? Sure, and first off, I'd like to say, because um, I'm reading it now, this could allow the district to sidestep compliance with the Brown Act. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the wrong way to put it, because we'd still be complying with the Brown Act um, as ad hoc committees are still mentioned in the Brown Act, yeah. and what that mentions is that um, as long as it's uh, following the procedures for an ad hoc committee, it doesn't need to be noticed. So we're not sidestepping the Brown Act. Um, though I, I mean, I can definitely see how it is easy to put it that way, but in the future I think we should um, sidestep is the wrong. What I was trying to do is I was trying to summarize Bob Geis's comments about um, about how to, about the benefit of this, and so I apparently right. I'm, I'm 
use of wrong terms. And I think we're on the same page with what we want, well, what's being discussed here. But just yeah. um, It's just about how it's being characterized yeah. in, the, in the item. But um, anyway, so my idea with this is that right now um, all of our standing committees, even though we, we haven't necessarily mm -hmm. called them standing committees um, in the motions that created them, they are essentially standing committees. Um, all of them require public noticing uh, to meet, which is, which is great, and we've had great public discussions. Um, but one of the things uh, that I just wanted to discuss was, will, will this committee um, better operate and be more efficient um, in regard to drafting the preliminary policies of the district if it was an ad hoc committee where up to three directors, hopefully the existing the, the current <laughs> members of this committee could continue to meet in an ad hoc capacity. Still reporting back to the board of directors, um, still passing on recommended policies, um, but in that ad hoc capacity. And what we'd be doing and what we'd have to change to the purview of this committee or what the board of directors would have to change is have it focused on a single specific project, which that is compiling the initial policies of the district. Um, and then also set a time time limit on it. I, I'm not sure which way we should go on this, but it was something that I wanted to discuss, and I, I hope that all the other committees are discussing it as well. Do you have any yet or? I mean, well, I would just say that um, one of the areas where I feel like we'd benefit from having an ad hoc committee is in, in the situation that we have right now. So for example, I, so I brought this sheet here today after I was thinking about things last night and I wrote this um, up these proposed policies. So there's no way we can consider these this meeting because, well, unless they happen to fall under the purview of another they agenda do. item. They do. They do. Yeah, actually, the, 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 this, this is, um, our committee meeting is not covered by the uh, crazy directors with backpacks uh, clause because that was a board meeting related. I'm sorry, well, this is me. the same as what I did last time. Yeah, yeah. And what you did last time, actually, too. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I mean, I, I would say, well, maybe I should reread the exact language of this is item four. Um, These, yeah, I, I believe that I made no edits to the description of item four from the previous. Uh, so, for example, would I mean? I guess I guess that item or my, the code of ethics policy that I proposed would technically fall under number four, even though um, the places in the policy manuals that I was reviewing when I compiled this, the places in the policy manual where it came from, if I'm remembering correctly, were not like under the same board of directors section. But I mean, again, that is kind of uh, not relevant given that we are not deciding on how to structure this. But I guess my point is that Given that, like, we're going to be in a situation where we'll probably meet within five days a week at the latest of a given board meeting, and at each board meeting, I know there are things that I'm seeing that are like, oh, this is something that we need to work on, or we need a policy for this, or we need to clarify this, and then we'll go and have the meeting. And in this situation here, we didn't have, like, we had to get the, um, we had to get the agenda out um, before before the meeting was, and we didn't really establish a procedure. Like we basically just directed the the president to, to talk mm -hmm. about it, and so there's no way for us to be like, oh, let's put this item on Thank the agenda, you know, which is understood, and that's kind of the same issue that we're having at the board level. But I would just say that I think that being an ad hoc committee would allow us to be more flexible with that, um, and would allow us to institute policies that like uh, you know a little more quickly mm -hmm. in the situation and recommend that they policies Re recommend yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry so are you, are you done yeah sure. I, 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 by the way so I, I apology for this sort of uh, thing I'm I'm from the Midwest specifically Chicago and um, there's like I've studied linguistics for a while and there's this thing we do which is negative turn order where I kind of will sometimes predict when a sentence is ending and start speaking and I've, 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 I started like over the last 15 years being in California, I tend to catch myself doing that. Like, I'll do it and I'll say, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I still find myself doing it. And no, I, don't and worry please, about it. I like, do that too. Like, and yeah. Um, so, what are you saying? Oh, 
Um, so one, one thing to note is that, the, as far as I understand, the way that the law is structured, I mean, we can claim that something is an ad hoc committee, but it actually still can be subject to, I'm not certain that that's really an ad hoc committee based upon the sort of things that you're doing. Um, policy committees are committees that typically boards just have, that the construction of policies is something that, I mean, the IVRPD has had a policy committee mm -hmm. forever. Um, the, I think it looks, if nothing else, really bad to have a standing policy committee, then attempt to construct a different form of committee so that we don't have to have this noticing requirement, because that is what I'm seeing all of the arguments this are based are the noticing requirements is onerous. I don't want to do the noticing requirement. I don't think that 72 hours is a very long time, sorry, is a such a short period of time that we can't pull that off. In this case, the issue that happened is, is that we scheduled this meeting now just because you were going to be away, but I don't think that that's a general thing that we should be like, oh, well, it's because of people being away that that causes us to have really short meeting times, which then causes us to need to use a 24-hour notice in order to get something from the agenda of the previous board meeting on the thing. Two weeks is enough time to have a 72-hour notice, have this meeting, and then have the uh, notice for the next board meeting to have the recommendation on it. Ethan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my bad. I actually left out one of the other side of this, which is a big reason for why mm -hmm. I've wanted to bring this up. This would, I mean, the noticing part, that's one aspect of this, but what this would also allow, according to my understanding, is it would allow, as long as we're not talking to any other board directors outside of board meetings, it would allow the three of us to communicate on policy when we're not in noticed meetings. Um, where right now, we, we, the three of us can have no communication outside of these meetings on policy. And I believe, and you guys let me know if you have a feel on this, I believe that if we were an ad hoc committee, which ad hoc committees are not, are not um, subject to the regular requirements of the Brown Act, that we would be able to communicate openly with each other about what we're working on. Hey, check out this draft, that type of thing. Which right now, since we can't do that, we all come in kind of uh, blind to what others may be presenting, yeah. even though thus far it's worked out fine. Um, but that's just, uh, that was another reason yeah. why I was bringing this up. I, Sorry, I totally I understand that at the beginning. I, like I totally understand your feeling that because I was like typing these out and I was like, hmm, I wonder if like other people are working on the same stuff as I am. Um, which, I mean, again, like we should be communicating as much in these meetings as possible, but you know, these were. Most of these I typed up just kind of on the fly, or not typed up. I typed portions of them. Nice. So I sent myself a copy of this wording that I don't now actually have easy access to um, because I, I keep doing things where I use my phones for other purposes. Um, but uh, my understanding is, is that we actually, if we construct an activity that we're going to, for example, do, uh, maybe we want to uh, uh, like actually perform a compilation, um, then the, they, we can actually do that outside of the scope of this meeting. Um, but that's something that with the exact wording we should, we should Clarify with, but like I don't. What do you mean by perform a compilation? Before? Like, like for, I mean, like, I'm, I, like the issues that Ethan's bringing up as far as us being unable to co to communicate with each other. The, I feel that. I mean, I feel that in the sense of it's always annoying when you can't just communicate with each other. You know, it'd be really nice if like, seven of us board members could just get together and talk about stuff. But the whole point of all of these laws is to try to provide a lot of transparency into government. Right. And I appreciate that there is a mechanism in the law by which if we just really carefully construct everything, we can succeed in not satisfying that requirement um, because like that, 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 that intent. But I don't think that that is okay. And I think that that, that, that opens us up to um, complaints from third parties, complaints within the board about um, lack of transparency as far as things that are happening. I mean, we currently have a situation that we have, we have two board members who have been working together for a while on negotiating a contract who then together have continually pushed all of the work to committee, who then together have worked to try to get our committee meetings to be ad hoc meetings so we don't have to actually have noticing requirements for them or public or, or required to have public availability for them and have actually been the two of them arguing against video recording of these meetings as it has currently been done. I, I don't think that that's an accurate description. That is, that, that is, my, that is my opinion of, of, this, of this going on. And I believe that this is something that other people right. might well, also I feel. Think, I, I would ask that we review that because okay. I don't think that's what they were all And I'm not sure I don't think that's, that's, that's not something, we cannot, re we cannot review that during policy committee, but, that, but it, 
that to me that is a that is something that is relevant as far as if we're going to be pushing things to ad hoc committee we need to understand possible perception issues related to what happens when we just keep making all of our committees be, po be ad hoc committees. I am adamantly opposed to converting these committees to ad hoc committees, particularly policy committee, which other districts have as standing committees. This doesn't seem to be like a situation where we can just take this committee and turn it into an ad hoc committee. Well, I think that the, the difference is that while other districts do have policy committees, those are committees that are tasked with occasionally revisiting and revising portions of a mm -hmm. policy manual that's already existing. Whereas we're in a situation where we just got to get one. We got to get one on the table. We have to make sure that it's comprehensive. And that's a lot of work. Um, and of course, I'm not complaining about that work. I'm happy to do it. But there, I don't think that it's accurate to say that this is just an attempt to step around noticing requirements and step around, um, I, I don't think that it makes it less transparent of a process. What I think that it does is it allows for the work to continue outside of the meetings and the committee is going to review, would review any work that was done in joint by you and I or Ethan and you or me and Ethan and then the board would review those policies and those would all be discussed and I mean, I don't know, I, I, I understand the, the want for, and I mean, honestly, the, the, the one thing that, that gives me pause on this is, is not being sure whether or not if we were an ad hoc committee, we would still be able to have recordings and videos. And that's a no, right? And do you know about that? I think we can record whatever we like. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, then that, it's that changes. It's not required, but I think. It, it, we, 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 can, we can choose to do that. However, uh -huh. it, is not, it is not legally mandated in the sense of allowing it. So okay. uh, well, I wouldn't it, is not, it, is not, it is not something that yeah. then anyone would be able to fall back on law in order to state that these meetings can be recorded. Okay. Well, I mean, I certainly would not want to switch or ask the board to disband and then reform as an ad hoc if we didn't stipulate that we were, like, we, I don't know if we, like, the intention or have them direct us to record the meetings. I don't know if that's something that, but I mean, the, the meeting should be recorded. And I mean, in terms of, uh, I mean, maybe that's a whole other topic about public participation in an ad hoc committee. Even. Yeah, and what I'll say right now is I'm really happy with the discussion we've had. I thought my intention to bring this up wasn't necessarily to go either way. I just thought it's important for all committees to discuss it. Um, at this point, I won't be moving any action on this, um, but I, I do think that it's good that we had this discussion, and for me, it, it, it provides me with an understanding, and hopefully you both, of uh, why we are meeting in the current way that we are and uh, it provides a uh, direction for moving forward and maybe in the future this will come back and we'll want to take some action on it um, but at this time based on what I have I won't be moving anything okay what would the public participation look like with an ad hoc committee no public permissible? no membership is allowed I'm okay. sorry what would would members of the public be able to come and attend and speak during a public comment period. We could literally meet in Ethan's bedroom. And invite whoever we like. Yeah. Um, so, like, we could still notice it, and if we wanted to set it up for the public comment period, we, we could do that, but there's no but, legal but, mandate. But at that point, we may, I, like, my perspective, we may as well just accept the 72-hour requirement, which is, seems like the only right. particular difference. If we're going to have public right. and meetings 20, that people that are recorded hour. that allow, well, we really should talk about having a regular meeting. Um, okay. The law actually does have issues with related to um, essentially figuring out ways of sidestepping the regular meeting requirements. So <laughs> uh, we should all win, but um, so the 72 hours. I don't really think this is sidestepping though. I, I, I mean, I, at this point, like, I, I don't think, like, I agree with Ethan. This should be something that is, like, stays in the back of our mind that mm -hmm. we should be thinking about. I don't think that we're ready to take action on this at all and ask the board to do anything about it. But I, I really don't think that it's sidestepping. I, I think that it is working within this particular set of circumstances that we find ourselves in that are unique compared to the circumstances in a lot of other districts and their policy committees would find themselves in. And I think that in a lot of ways that same kind of, um, that same statement can apply to the other committees that are within the board's jurisdiction too. Okay. Is anyone? 
Make a motion on this. All right. Uh, public comment. There is no one in the public. <laughs> uh, moving on to agenda item number two. Consider policy for board discussions and motions. So this is an agenda item that I added. Uh, in recent meetings, motions have taken the place of discussion, making it extremely difficult to track the board decision making, and has led to numerous moments of regret, some humorous, some tragic, where a realization is made about an item after it has already been decided in the rush to clear a motion. At this time, we will discuss possible solutions to this problem, potentially culminating in a recommendation for new board policy to encourage actual discussion. Um, I wish I had made one modification to this, which is, uh, I mean, it doesn't affect our ability to discuss anything, but I wish I had worded it. At this time, we will, dis we will discuss whether this is a problem and possible solutions to this problem. Um, so this is my agenda item uh, to introduce this. We have now had at least three agenda items where there has been a situation where it's been moved, seconded, voted, and then almost immediately afterwards, we end up in a situation where somebody's saying, well, wait a second, uh, what about, and it's like, well, no, actually, that's already been decided. Um, the, uh, one of these situations is uh, part of what caused the six-hour debacle of our first meeting, uh, whereby we realized that um, based upon a, the way that we set up the committee appointments, that we now could no longer even figure out how to vote the committees and had to then spend a bunch of time figuring out how to make that work. Um, I've put some thought into this, uh, and because it's like, you know, well, how are you going to solve this? this um, but when you look at the, for example, the Board of Supervisors meetings, the Board of Supervisors meetings are set up whereby, actually, one, one, more, one more piece of introduction on this. And another, um, so I brought up there were three of these. In another situation, um, it was a, an agenda item that came forward where almost immediately a motion occurred, and then all discussion had to take place during the motion, even though there had been no, um, there had been no, it's not even about discussion. There had been no even introduction as far as uh, what was happening. Yeah. Uh, and then there was, and then then I will I will explicitly call out the agenda item that I literally used the word insane about, which was I received complaints from the public about this one as well. Um, the uh, um, starting to figure out how to put people on a committee that we hadn't even described the purpose of yet, um, because we were already in a motion in order to attempt to construct and put people on the committee. Um, so at the board of supervisors level, the way that the structure of the meeting is set up, such that there is a letter, a, a board letter associated with agenda items from the department or the, or the, um, the office of supervisor that has requested that items be put on the agenda. Um, this board letter can then provide in somewhat the, the, the kind of statements that I was trying to throw into this agenda and actually explain to the public why we were talking about something. Because the goal of an agenda item shouldn't just be that there is an umbrella under which motions can happen. It's supposed to be there is an intention from somebody to make a change and what the goal and thought process there is. Um, the Board of Board of Supervisors then has, a, before they do anything else, they actually have an introduction. It's, it's a formalized mechanism by which the department or the, or the supervisor that requested the item introduces the agenda. And I, I think that we should have some mechanism by which we actually state there will first be an introduction of the item by the um, the requester of the agenda item before we then have discussion, which I think will, if nothing else, then allow for things like we should at least have actually there are four of these agenda items we run into. Um, we we should at least have like read through something um, and, and and presented. I mean, you'll even see when there are things like contracts that somebody from one of the departments of the board of supervisors will go through point by point what the what the negotiation had been related to things. Um, and, uh, and so I do think that this is actually something that we can address as policy committee. And I do think this is something that the board can then um, you know, actually make policies related to. I, I, I don't think that this is a, a, a lost cause, but maybe you don't agree that there is a, is a problem. Um, but that is, that is my introduction to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just want to say I definitely think that we do have a problem where there are preempt, I would call them preemptive motions motions that are made when there's not discussion that has been had yet and then the motion will limit the discussion that can take place and that's just confusing for everybody so I don't know if that's something that is like what would a policy like that look like do you have ideas not necessarily on that. I was going to say something else. Oh, okay. So, we, um, well, so uh, as I described, I mean, one thing that we could at least do is to is to enforce an introduction phase from the per person who put uh, requested item be on the agenda, yeah. and that would at least provide information to the public as far as what was going on. Um, it does not necessarily solve the complete problem of preemptive motions, but even. Yeah, and um, so, and one example of this was in our first meeting. One of the first actions we did, um, people were moving the nominations of 
president and vice president before hearing from the whole board. And that was, um, I think the, that's kind of related. Like, there wasn't enough discussion before a motion was made. Um, we didn't provide opportunities for directors to say, oh, I'm actually in interested in that. Um, within the first comments, there was already a motion being made. Um, I, and actually, uh, I and one issue that I ended up having with that is I, I think that I may have accidentally, I said something about nominating somebody, and I'm starting to think that somebody else thought there was a motion that was already being made, and then there was more confusion. It turned into a motion. Yeah. But, but I did not make that motion. But. Yeah. but then I think, like, with with mine, there was, I mean, maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy yeah. with the result of it, <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. I think that was an example of, like, a motion was made, like, before really much discussion. Um, that was kind of my introduction to this issue, mm -hmm. which now in other meetings it's had to do with business. I think that this is something that can be more of a norm than a policy. Um, my, my thought on it is, and this even ties in with another thing, there's sometimes people, when they're making motions on their board, it's done in a very, for not much effort is put into it. Yeah. I was gonna say something <laughs> yeah. else. Have, have. But, and as Sorry. you both have probably noticed, I spend so much time is this the motion that was made? And I read what I think they were trying to do because they just said so moved to something that something someone else said. Yeah, I think that's part of it too. Like we just need people putting to be more conscientious about making motions and where that takes place. And I think as the presiding officer of the meetings, that's a role that I have, and that's something that I need to maybe set expectations for. And I would like to ask that um, this committee leave that to me to try to set that norm at the next meeting and come back and, and see how that's working out. Because I definitely hear the concern and I think it's real. Um, I'd like to see if it's something that can be done without a policy, um, but yeah. I, I absolutely agree that this is something that, I mean, like, even like trying to figure out how could a policy be constructed to do this, it seems more like a social uh, social norm issue, which is, um, but uh, I, and so I agree with the perspective of the preemptive motion problem and the lack of effort, effort problem. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm also wondering though about the, um, uh, the structure of, a, uh, of agenda items even as, I mean, like this, because I think this also somewhat affects agendas um, with, as far as uh, introduction and um, f essentially it causes a forced form of discussion uh, of some form because it at least, at least means that we, everyone will hear what the agenda item is about and what we are doing with it before a motion can occur. Um, but that, if, you, if you feel that that is something that can be addressed just as presiding officer, um, then that is also, but. Well, I mean, I think if, if with every item after the, the director who's introduced it has explained, um, I think that there should be a time where clarifying questions are asked before anyone makes a motion. And I think that if that was something that was presented to the board, um, that it would be respected. I'm not sure if that gets at what you were speaking that, that, to. That, that, gets, that gets at half of it, and so okay. I can thank you, thank you yeah. for that suggestion. Um, the, the other half of it, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying, that, like, you know, I'm not trying to whittle it down to where something still has to be done. I'm like, I'm curious to now, like, maybe you'll, have, you'll address this half as well, um, is that even the agendas themselves, um, so I tried to do that for this one, and I admit, first of all, that I failed, and second of all, I will state that I felt awkward in the process of it um, and of trying to motivate purposes. Uh, so like what, I, what I was describing with, for example, the, the Board of Supervisors with their agenda is in order to allow that discussion to take place, you essentially need, for the, at least for the public's purpose, that to have been disclosed in some way. Uh, and so if there was, for example, a board letter associated with an agenda item that was put by, and it could be done in our case because we just have a, board members putting things on the agenda. So with attachments. Yeah, well, so, a, a, and so for example, if when somebody wanted to put something on the agenda, they sent an, a, a letter to Spencer, which, a letter to the secretary, um, and that, sec that letter were attached, and then that essentially is a jumping point for both the discussion and for the public's understanding of what we're doing. I, I think that could be good. Mm -hmm. I um, think that there, there is a little room for some sort of a policy on the reading of agenda items um, because I'm just thinking about the way that the Board of Supervisors just does it um, and um, this also, you're right, it does really interact with the agenda a lot because, um, so for example, it's just a random admin item that the Board of Supervisors had 
um, for human resources um, that um, kind of follows the structure that I was trying to follow when um, when I did some of the A and B subpoints of the agenda, um, which was, uh, it just says, consider recommendations regarding a minimum wage increase for paid interns as follows. And then there's an item A, adopt a resolution effective on this date to set a rate of pay for the job classification of intern, yada, yada, yada. And then B is their CEQA uh, portion that they attach to a lot of items, Determ determination that it, this is not uh, pursuant to the CEQA. Um, and so, and for example, I'm looking at item 3.3 of the last board meeting that we had, which was called consider adopting a calendar of future meetings. And then the description is consider adopting a future meeting calendar, see attachment A, and then there is subpoint A, adopt the future meeting calendar, subpoint B, direct the secretary of the board to continue to work in consultation with the president to perform all these. So I think that in terms of people making motions, it would be very helpful, and I know it's my intention when I do this as secretary, when I write out, when I delineate these things, is that people can say, I move uh, agenda item 3.3 recommendations A and B, so that we, number one, that makes it a lot easier for whoever's taking minutes. Number two, uh, we generally, I generally try to write these things out so that they are fully inclusive. Um, or even if someone doesn't want to move exactly what it says, they can still have something to work off of that they can read when they speak their motion out loud. Um, so I think that that part of it is a norm, but when items are being introduced, so for example at the board, if we, if, or, uh, 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 yeah, I'm sorry, at the board of supervisors, so when we go from item, um, let's see, I'm scrolling down to the departmental items, um, I'm trying to find one that's not so long. That's really long. So, um, <laughs> that sequel one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Um, so this is uh, a departmental item from the county executive office. They're cited as being the office that put it on the agenda. It's called Consider Board of Supervisor Appointments to Boards, Commission, and Committees as follows. And then there are about, ooh, let's see, all the way from A to U there are committee members who are being appointed. Um, and so the, the description that I just read about considering Board of Supervisors appointments, usually that would be read out loud to the public by the clerk of the board or the deputy clerk of the board. And so that, and I mean, that kind of thing is something that we can have you do as the president. Where you just explain, where you just read the exact item, and I think that generally you do do that. Yeah, I've also been reading the descriptions for pretty much all of it, and then passing it off to whoever is presenting. But a, but a big difference though is is that so there's the there's that agenda description, and then every board of supervisors item has one of these letters. Right. That's that what is we're then missing. that is then like in, well, usually because it's a departmental agenda, it's so like from a department, and then the letter explains it has the recommended actions, but it also explains the background of the action as far as why it was interesting to have it and what the what the goals essentially were. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I don't think it's I, mean, I don't think it's fair to put that on you, by the way, for all sorts of reasons. Like as somebody who now put together an agenda and was trying to think <laughs> through some of this stuff, I, I, I it is not good for me to have to be trying to put myself in the head of people who are putting on agenda because I'm going to end up slanting it or ruining it. Um, and uh, then, and, and I feel that then as somebody who then gives stuff to you to put on the agenda, as for example what happened with policy committee last time where there was a slight misunderstanding of what the goal that I had with what with it was and then well, we couldn't even necessarily talk about the, the thing that ended up on the agenda because mm -hmm. it wasn't really what yeah. I was hoping to have. And so um, I, I I think that it would be much better if we had uh, essentially a more formal process that required some of that effort in the sense of I mean, like we in it, it's not just like the so moved and we actually have had yeah put that on the agenda and it was like right. okay that's all uh, I think I understand what you must mean from that uh, <laughs> but during the board directors meeting not during policy meeting well maybe something that would be helpful is just that when board members request that things be put on the agenda they should have it in writing. I don't know if that is that too much to ask if people no. come up with things. I don't on the think block. that's too much to ask. But. Okay, and 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 then it would um, it would have the the name, and then there'd be a description, and then it would be up to their discretion if they wanted to put subpoint actions, such as like the A, B, and C 
recommend such and such. Um, I mean, I I think that that is the that's something that would be consistent with how an item would be placed on the agenda. The only difference is that normally, and I'm thinking normally as in if we had a full fully staffed district with a general manager. Yeah. Which we're about to have some enhancements. Which, yeah, yeah, <laughs> sounds like it. Um, in, in that case, it would be in consultation with that person. And that person would be s somewhat professional and would have experience writing agenda items to make them as neutral and action oriented and as broad or limited as the board member wanted to be as possible. Um, so, I mean, that's the only thing that would give me pause is, I don't know, maybe there needs to be a discussion or some sort of a training about how you would write agenda items. It would certainly make, I think, anyone who's maintaining an agenda's life a lot easier, whether you're the chair of a committee or you're the chair of the board. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't know. What do you think about that? No, I, I think we absolutely should set up some protocol for it. And I'll so what Joan uh, Hartman, Supervisor Hartman, shared with me the other day in our meeting was she gave me like a, a packet which was uh, Joan's notes for meetings or something like that. And I, I don't know where that document is right now. But what she had in there was she made reference to specific like uh, – policies that the board's subject to, but she just set a lot of norms in it. And if that's something that the secretary wants to do, I think that's one way we can go about it. And we definitely, we, we need to develop a policy for getting things on the agenda. And within that policy, we can get specific to that. Um, but also, if that's something the secretary wants to do, let people know, hey, as the person responsible for placing things on these agendas based on uh, board motion, board direction, uh, this is how I'd like it to be done. That's also in your power, I believe. But I mean, we definitely do need, because right now we haven't done anything through policy to set how to use it, place something on the agenda, right? Has that been in our policy? Uh, yeah. We've made reference to it with um, how to adopt policies. Or we've, make we've only spoken about that. Direction. Hey, Ben. We've only spoken about direction for who creates and maintains the agenda. Well, not spoke. We've only taken action on those things. Yeah. And in the in the adoption amendment of policies, we reference getting things on the agenda. <laughs> but I don't think we <laughs> have like yeah. we haven't created a policy for yeah. getting things on the agenda to this point, right? Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I that it, oh, not a policy. It came up. It came policy. up during the first board meeting that there was a process. Wasn't there that? And I mean, it was. Am I wrong? It definitely came up, but I don't believe it took action. And that goes back to the whole motion thing, where sometimes these we'll we'll have a a broad, fully uh, fruitful discussion about something, and then we'll get on to something else, and then we'll make a motion about that, and then we'll be like, oh well, we're done with this item, right? But. And everyone will be like, oh, yeah, I think so, but we'll have forgotten the other thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, fully inclusive motions are good. And I personally, as a visual person, think that that's why, like, that's why I like delineating the proposed actions, because if I don't see it in writing and I just hear it, then I might forget it. If we have a discussion about, um, say, for example, like, if we were having this discussion at the board level, uh, you know, there are there would be tons of things, and I we made a motion to establish a, a policy to set the procedures by which someone would place an item on the agenda. And then you know I would be the person that would forget that we previously talked about, um, you know, something else that we previously talked about, and then moved on. Mm -hmm. And for a point of reference, if you guys go to eighty five on in the IBRPD packet, that's where they have these policies. Um, the first is 5010.8, which uh, is district staff will prepare a written report to the board that details for each item of business, one, a synopsis of the item, two, a synopsis of any relevant information from previous discussions of the item by board, committees of the board and public, three, of any new information that staff may have gathered since the last board discussion, four, any action requested by staff regarding the topic. So that would be if they're trying to kind of get an out, out of this or if we as directors are. 
Um, yeah. And I, and I will I will say that um, I I am very appreciative of the fact that uh, we are currently a small district with no staff and are relying on uh, Spencer to do these things. And I feel like th this can be an onerous set of requirements. But. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, I yeah. don't think this should be. Yeah, <laughs> I that's think a this is a this is on the wish list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think if we were to develop policy like this, it will be aimed at the director who's putting it on the agenda. Okay. Yeah. And that's not to be a barrier for me <laughs> up on the agenda, <laughs> but yeah. to to help the decision making mm -hmm. process. And then in the policy 5020.1, um, that talks about how chairperson in cooperation with the general manager shall prepare an agenda for each regular meeting, regular special meeting. Uh, here, in our case, at, per direction of the board, it's um, secretary and president. And it mentions any director may submit to the general manager and request that any item to be placed on the agenda no later than five on the 10th day prior to the meeting date, which is interesting. Yeah, which is something that uh, I, I, not for today, but at some point I'm gonna be bringing up, wanting to do stuff about this, so. Yeah, I think, again, wish list. Yeah. Oh, it will, it will be at some point, at some point. You like it be a, like an attachment to the meeting minutes as our, our, our codified wish list? These are the things, we <laughs> want, these are the things that we want to recommend to you for eventually, policy, but we can't right? recommend it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just so some things that you guys have written down so you know everything that you want. Yeah, like like in, in my head and like on my piece of paper, yeah. Oh, but right, like, so do does this committee have one of those documents? Oh, no. Like that compiles a lot now? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, because I, I don't. I don't think we actually can formally now write this down as a wish list, and then because we didn't, it would like have a yeah wish list agenda. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. I gotta stop saying the word wish list. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> so, do we have any recommended policy on this right now, or do we want to? I work on as as in my role as board president, developing some norms and my wishes for uh, the directors, the secretary works on the same. Yeah. Um, do we want to do that type of thing? Oh, yeah, so, and so you think that the, that the secretary can do that for the agenda issues? For the, well, for the board president would talk about the, the, all the, the norms, stuff during the meeting norms and the stuff during the meeting, the and, I would, and I think I that would could come up during board member that. reports. Yeah, and I'll probably have something written. Though, I mean, I do. we do will that. have to develop a policy for getting things on the agenda, yeah, yeah, but probably something yeah, better for yeah, some work gone out. Cur cur currently, if we believe that if we believe that uh, Spencer as uh, secretary is able to do set a norm and may, and that will mean something to anyone, I'm okay with this right now. I'm, I'm very glad that we were able to have this discussion, and I was exceptionally happy that you seemed to agree that there was at least a problem. So. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And is, <laughs> is that friendly with the secretary? Oh, it's friendly. Yeah. Maybe that was a motion. No motion. I oh, okay. was making sure that he was cool with setting like that norm because I know I'm cool with Yeah, but you said friendly yeah. with the second. I was like, wait a second. Oh, is the that secretary. A, is that a, oh, the secretary. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah. Let me just write it down so I don't forget. We've clearly been taking comments from the public as we've been doing this, but I mean, you, officially, before we move on from this agenda, do you have anything you'd like to add? I just, I mean, I guess when I think of this uh, with the MOU, Natalie, after the motion was passed, I knew... Uh, there are a couple moments where we said, oops, or where the board just said, oops, we already passed it. I guess we can't change it. So, yeah. It's needed. Well needed. Thank you very much for that comment. All right, moving on to agenda item three, consider policies for public involvement on committees. Uh, this agenda item was put on our agenda, I believe, by uh, request by George Thurlow. It might have been by Edom. I think by Geis. Oh, my God. Am I born? Here, I, I have think a, it was guys. Actually. I have a I'll pull up the motion. Uh, go back and look. Oh, you're right. Thurlow Jordan. Good job. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, multiple committees are excited about having public members, but we have no policy for how those will be handed. This was seen as a problem during the board meeting, why I refer here. Since so, it became the job of policy committee to work out those processes. At this time, we will discuss potential ways to manage public members and could recommend new board policy to help these other committees with their actions. Okay. And us, I mean, if we want any, any committees. <laughs> so I 
Uh, I, I'm, I, I, one, one thing, actually, you know, we got, we've got the feedback that I was supposed to forward from Jonathan, I should first do. So Jonathan Abood was, had to leave early, but uh, Jonathan wanted us to, during this item, to use comment that, um, no, not that one, this one's, uh, public members on, that they have a process for having public members on the college president search committee that he was a part of, um, that they had letters of interest uh, from uh, members of the public who wanted to be on it. They had a deadline by which those letters had to be sent. Um, all of those letters were then read by the board. They were agendized and made public. Um, there was a debate, um, but there was no specified way uh, to actually choose between those people on the board. And so uh, it, it ended up getting confusing and that we should keep that in mind during our discussion of this item. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. Here's a question. So, and I'm just, I think one, well, one of the, <coughs> One of the subjects that I wish to discuss in the next item was policies on committees in general. And I think since we don't have any of those decided yet, maybe we should have that discussion first. Um, but I'm also, like, just because I, I think it would be helpful for us to kind of see what direction we want to go with the committee policies before having some a, a specific part of that. Uh, I'm amenable to move, moving objectives, moving item three after item four, if you'd like to do that. Um, I mean, I, I just think that could help in yeah. yeah, I think I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. And um, oh, if you, you wanted to keep arguing, all good. Okay. Uh, is there any uh, comment from Ben on us moving this agenda? Item? Do we have to move this agenda item to be moved? No, sure. I should because I'm running the sure. meeting. Okay. Sure. So we're moving on to agenda item four, uh, which will will come back to three after four. Consider recommendations on meeting procedures and operational policies. This item was referred back to our committee from our committee by Ethan's request to just duplicate the item. At this time, we will consider making recommendations to the Board of Directors regarding policies and procedures of the Board, including but not limited to duties of the Board, roles of officers, meetings, rules of order, Board meeting conduct, Brown Act compliance, agendas, actions and decisions, and minutes. See attachments A and B, which are the exact same attachments that we had last time, uh, the Isla Vista Community, sorry, Isla Vista Recreation Park District Policy Manual subset and the Vandenberg Community Service District Policy Manual subset. And uh, question. I, it's my interpretation that regarding policies and procedures of the board would, under that would be policies and procedures for committees of the board. Do you, do you all have that same That was also my impression. That was how we were interpreting this last time when we were doing this. Committees um, created by the board serve at the pleasure of the board. There a complaint from a member of the public about us uh, interpreting that agenda? Okay. Right. So what I'm asking there, yeah. like, everyone's comfortable discussing yeah. committees. Yeah, I think so. And for the record, this is all committees of the board. Yeah. That's our intention with formulating this policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we, uh, why don't we refer to some of the policies we have in front of us uh, on the bottom of page 79 for um, IVRPD manual. That's where they have their um, committee policies. The board shall appoint such ad hoc committees as may be deemed necessary or advisable by the board. The duties of the ad hoc committee shall be outlined at the time of appointment, and the committee shall be considered dissolved when its final report has been made. That's something I like. And then after that, it outlines the following shall be standing committees of the board. I think to begin one of these policies, maybe we can combine those first two, where the board shall appoint standing committees and ad hoc committees as deemed necessary. Um, that type of that type of thing. Um, and then the duties of such committees rather than just ad hoc committees shall be outlined at the time of appointment. Okay, I'm sorry, Matt. I was just getting it set up and, and then I'm like the font thinking the out loud with this yeah. as well. So um, if you what were you saying again? So uh, I, I'm generally 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 able to keep up with that sort of thing, but then the font was okay, taking a long time to change. The board shall appoint standing and ad hoc committees as may be deemed necessary or advisable by the board. The duties of such committees shall be outlined at the time of appointment and maybe um, we put a period there. Ad hoc committees shall be considered dissolved when its final report has been made. I also am missing the left shift key on this keyboard. Can we say an ad hoc committee? 
Sorry, that's me being English picky. So then take the S off of committees, right? Yes. Cool. So, and then maybe adding to the sentence, the duties of such committee shall be outlined at the time of, oh, the, the existing sentence. Oh. Um, in that one that says the duties of such committees shall be outlined at the time of appointment, yeah. maybe as well as appointments made to the committee, and figure out the good way to say that. But appointments mean the the, the, the people who the directors redundant. will be on it. Well, the is duties redundant? of such committees shall be outlined at the time of appointment, as well as appointments made to. The oh, we can change the wording, but we should have in there membership at some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. At the time so of we'll creation of the members, maybe yeah. the committee. I like where you were going with Mem the creation. Yeah, members okay. for or of the committees, uh, as well as members of or uh, just of the committees of the committees. Okay. But I was going to say change outlined at the time of appointment to outlined at the time of formation. And there should be a V before members, right? I'm going to say oh, it should be of the committee because the duties of. Oh, wait, no, such committees, okay, now. Should be outlined at the time of formation. That's right. Um, Did Ben have a comment? Just change the last sentence so it's plural instead of singular. Because the rest, everything else is committees. Mm -hmm. So just say I want. Okay, we'll change the it's then. Yeah, that's the that's the reason I messed with that. Yeah. Okay. The middle and sentence is like grammatically weird, but should I mean, there be a comma after there. formation? Okay. Well, one thing we might we might consider is the duties of each committee shall be outlined at the time of formation, as well as the members on that committee. Ad hoc and an ad hoc committee shall be considered dissolved when its final report has been made. And I think that solves some of the grammatical issues and also makes some of the pluralization less weird. You're a visual person. I can just show you what that would look like. Um, <laughs> the duties of uh, each committee shall be outlined at the time of its formation, as well as the members of that committee. An ad hoc committee shall be dissolved when its final report has been made. That's a lot better. Okay. Should we make it a separate sentence for the members of the committee? With that, no. What we do is we move it. We move it. So we say the duties of each committee, and the members of each committee shall be outlined. Shall be outlined or shall be determined. The duties and members of each. Committee? Oh, there we go. Of each committee shall be outlined at the time of. I don't like an outlined for members though. Maybe. <laughs> oh. Okay. Time of oh, wait, duties and membership. How does that sound rather than duties and members? The duties and membership of each committee shall be determined at the time of its formation. I don't care that. Of uh, each committee's formation. It, instead of its formation? So I was, I was thinking it's because of each committee at the time of its, the, each, the, the committee formation. It, it feels awkward to me that the it's referring to um, something that is like plural. Well, the it's is not plural. The it's is referring to the singular committee. But it's each committee. Right. So it's an implication of, I don't know, it just feels awkward to me. It might be grammatically correct, but. Okay. It's, I mean, it's fine. It could also be at the time. The, it's all in there, honestly. You could take out it's. Duties yeah, and membership of, of each committee shall be determined at the time of formation. Solid. An ad hoc committee shall be considered dissolved when its final report has been made. And then should we follow that or proceed it with a standing committee shall exist in perpetuity to 
Pretty <laughs> sure that you okay. shall exist in perpetuity to carry out its function unless otherwise decided by the board of directors. It doesn't have to be that language, but something of that intent, perhaps. I, th I think it's good. Should there be a comma after function? The standing committee shall exist in perpetuity to carry out its function, unless otherwise directed by the board of directors, or decided. Directed. Directors do direct. That is the verb form of direct. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Yeah. All right, I think, I think this is good. So then the next portion of that would be delineating the standing committees of the board and the ad hoc committees of the board. Well, actually, I'm going to actually right recommend that we don't do that yet because so there is active members. conversation about yeah, yeah. standing versus ad hoc, and that will just cause more confusion. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> we don't want to confuse. Um, um, let's do, so if you look to 40.60.30, top of page 80. It says the board shall appoint and publicly announce the members of the standing committees for the ensuing year no later than the board's regular meeting in January. So obviously this policy overlaps between item 3 and item 4 in our agenda. Just point that out. Um, yes, except for the fact that um, I mean, like, if item three had not been on our agenda, we would still be discussing a sentence of the board shall appoint and publicly announce the members of the standing committee. Like, right. this is not a policy on necessarily. Oh, yeah, I think it's fine know. for us. To yeah, it's it not here. necessarily referring to members of the public. Yeah. Okay. It's members of the committee. Okay. So, like, you want. Do we want to have. I think should have brought a keyboard at the left shift. Okay. <laughs> you want that? <laughs> um, do we want to do something like that? Yeah, I, th I, th I mean, it sounds like a good practice to me. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I do think that's something, because one policy that we'll have eventually is, yeah. or actually, we have, in our president and vice president policy, do we have a January clause? Ooh, good question. Shit. I can't remember. Shit. Shit. And with all of the policies we've created, I know, I'm I not know, there's too many to asking it. Yeah, <laughs> me either. Here's the order. Yes, we do. Number three in the policy okay. that we adopted yeah, for you're right. president and vice president is the president and vice president shall be elected once each year at the first meeting in January. Okay, yeah. So I think this policy is just completely in line with that. Oh, 100%. We just have to change it instead of, I think what right now it just reads the January meeting. Oh, no, no, it does say yeah. the first meeting in uh, January. Yeah. Never mind. But this, I, I would say. It actually, weirdly, it just says the board's regular meeting in January. And this is because yeah. IVRPD only has one, one meeting a month, so. Oh, wait, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was reading. So I think perhaps we take out the yeah, note yeah. later and just, um, to first, be consistent with. The first regular meeting in January, yeah. We just add the word first. Cool. Yeah, yeah. that sounds good. Well. Um, Do we just want to have it the first meeting in January to be consistent with what we adopted for president and vice president? At the first meeting in January. Yeah, sure. I'm okay with it. I'm concerned in this section because it might seem like we're talking about the committee's first regular meeting in January. But it says the board's first regular meeting in January. Well, no, but he's suggesting that we remove the word boards. No, no, no he's I'm suggesting oh, you're, which? You're in regular. regular. Oh, okay. Um, Interesting. I would almost suggest that we fix the other one at some point. Um, the, the idea being that if you have a special meeting, you don't want to then say that, okay, now we're going to do all the committee appointments during that special meeting that we called, or that emergency meeting that we called, or... Um, yeah, that's fine. Should we... Let's see, what item are we under? 
Yeah, we can consider making a, an amendment to just add the word regular to the other yeah. policy. And we can consider that, I think, maybe after yeah, yeah. we yeah. do this one. Keep it in mind. Because I actually have another amendment in mind as well. Okay. Policy fun. Um, as I, it, I mean, it doesn't really mention, there's no specification between, like, public or private people on board, so on the committee. So, for example, the three of you were appointed, but I think there should be a separate date if they're going to be people from the public on the committee as well. Yeah, that, that we will probably get to when we discuss yeah. Agenda 3. That's yeah. Yeah. Well, and a, what does a public announcement look like? That means that there's an agenda item that is entitled, re, like something along the lines of review membership of the of, of blank committee. And so, when then, I'm sorry, I maybe misunderstood. Rob, were you responding to Ben, or are you bring something? Kind well, of? I'm kind of bouncing off what he said. I don't. Did did, did Ben talk about? Public announcements. I thought it was about public appointments, like members of but the I think public. He was talking about like a. That's what you're talking about, though, right? You were saying you wanted a separate or a separate date for the announcements of. No, I was just referring to if they're going to be people from the public who aren't on the board or who aren't from the board of directors, then I think that should be probably a separate item or date. Date of what? Date of announcement, like. If the first, yeah, that's what I was saying. If, if, if the first meeting okay. is just to say, like, Spencer, Jay, and Ethan are on policy committee, I think then it should be something like on the second meeting of January, that's when um, any other committee members from the public will be determined. Okay. Or just something like that. But you'll get to that later. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe I think that the direction we're going is that we need some sort of a review process for members of committees because when we were appointed this committee, there was no terms. My understanding is that that's not typical. <laughs> it's it's not point. like, oh, you serve on this committee for two years and then you're out. So Well, same as when I was elected president, I don't think there was a term put on. Yeah. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Just saying. Um... So if anyone comes after me, I don't know if you have to stand <laughs> on. So in the IVRPD manual, uh, do they have a review for committee members? Or because they simply, I feel they like simply if state the issue about <coughs> that they will be no later than the board regular meeting in January. Committee selection policy. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So when a position on a district committee becomes open, the board shall determine a length of term for the position to be filled and a deadline for the receipt of applications. All right. Oh, but that sounds like a public member, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is good. That'll be helpful. Yeah. Too low. Oh, sorry. Cool. Oh, that's a good standard. Form 700s. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, this is all members of the public. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and this is just here, members of the board of directors, and so then just committees may be deemed advisable, and just the standing committees may be assigned to review district functions, set assignments, any recommendations resulting, personnel, and what they are. Yeah, so I don't yet see anything about how the committee's at some point term, except for indirectly from from the January where, clause. Yeah, the January oh, I, I'm totally yeah. satisfied with that for carrying out that part. Um, I mean, I would imagine that what happens when the members are announced is that it's agendized as a discussion of a point of like it's included in an appointment. I don't know, we can go back and look and see what the how IVRP does it for the I first think regular it's just meeting. It's like a committee assignment. Committee agenda, assignment. Some, that's kind of what I'm getting yeah. at. And sometimes there's turnover on the committees. Um, the personnel committee 
Dave and Peggy and were always really, really interested in for good reason. And this time, Peggy stayed on that committee, and um, I believe there was a new member appointed. I think it may have been Paula to serve along with her on that. So we should expect that there will be some turnover, but probably not all turnover on the committees. There will be members who stay on for continuity. Um, but with that, I think I'm satisfied with what we came up with in our January clause. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I like the next one too, 4060.4. The board's standing committees may be assigned to review district functions, activities, and or operations pertaining to their designated concerns as specified below, except we take out the as specified below mm -hmm. because we're not specifying the committees. Said assignments may be made by the committee chairperson, a majority vote of the board, which that would be the referred to committee vote, or on their own initiative. Any recommendations resulting from said review should be submitted to the board via a written or oral report. So I think perhaps if we... You want me to remove something? Sorry. Yes. If we strike um, as specified below at the end of sentence one... I think that's kind of pretty applicable to us. And do we want to add ad hoc to that sentence? Or is it good that that's just describing standing committees? Because I could see us establishing an ad hoc committee to look at a specific district function or a specific activity or specific part of operation. Yeah, I think it would make more sense if if we're gonna do one of these that describes ad hoc committees that we specified that the ad hoc committee can look into a specific. Because I feel like it would just get too messy if we threw it in there after standing committees. I think so. An ad hoc committee would probably do that though, as it is formed that you would form an ad hoc committee in order to review a district function. And at that point, right. the board can just do it like that. I mean, I'm imagining sure. that this clause is, is here because a standing committee already has some purpose. And it's like, well, why are, like, do we have a mechanism by which we can claim that that standing committee is? And this says may be assigned. So it's not like this is reserving all those rights just for standing committees as well. So, yeah. Should it be in sentence to set assignments rather than set assignment? Yes. Damn it, Rodney. Just kidding. Well, okay, so, <laughs> so in this case, what they're saying is that the board standing committee may be assigned to do something. That assignment may be made by. Well, I don't know because I mean, I yeah, I, I don't think any of these committees the are just going to have one assignment. Yeah. So. I mean, I guess the argument would be that there could be that's what there could be multiple things I'm under the assignment. I'm is the assignment the motion, or is the assignment a specific thing that you're allowed to look at? I think we're way too deep in the weeds. <laughs> I, I'm fine with either. One of them, to be completely honest with you. All right. I mean, I mean, there were, clearly there are lots of typos in the IBRBD one. I mean, the revising the district policy. Oh, or ord ordinance. ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. It's okay. Huh. Yeah, I'd, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, I'm happy with it. Ben. All right. And so then the next three lines that they have there are the spec the specified the specified um, the next three lines these three lines wait no 
the is next it, yeah, three next sub three points. Sub points. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those yeah, those are the, the mission statements of those committees. I think we're yeah. So we can. If nothing else, we shouldn't do that unless we you know, what we're doing now. unless we got the mission statements from the other committees. Yeah, I think that that's a revision that we could make at a later date. Yeah, and I remember for this one, forty sixty point seven, what what we spoke about doing last time, not necessarily referencing this line, but referencing this type of thing, is that committees shall conduct themselves at the discretion of the committee chairperson. That's what I was. Which I think we should put a sub point in okay. here about the committee chairperson in general, and have it there. The committees shall conduct themselves at the discretion of the committee chairperson. Yes, but perhaps what we do is right after um, the line about um, in the first meeting in January um, members are chosen, maybe we have at the first meeting of the committee, the committee shall elect a chairperson in, in a separate sub point. No. Well, and then we can take what here. we just wrote here and, and put it add right it and that. add it to that. Wait, was it the or a? B. The members, members. Members shall elect a committee chairperson. Members of the committee. And we'll capitalize committee chairperson, I think. And the apostrophe on committee. Apostrophe hmm? on committee. Oh. Committees. Oh, it shouldn't be there. Yeah. Oh, there should not be the possibility. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. That's, that's <laughs> okay, <five>. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Committees shall connect themselves to discretion. Committee chairperson. And Jay, thank you so much for bringing this technology. This is Yeah, this is working out so well. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> Public comment. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I say... It really is just a big television. It's not like it was... <laughs> 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 I say we move that right. Oh wait, no, you did move it. Never mind. I think this is good. Oh yeah. Yeah. Maybe to keep up with the intent of it, since it's defining the role of the chairperson, we start out off with um, the committee chairperson shall conduct the the meeting at their discretion. I don't know. That almost seems. I feel like in here, like in this sentence, I'm, I'm le it's less clear to me what conducting means. You know, actually, like can you me. revert to what you had yeah, before? Yeah, that's fine. Maybe themselves, if we change that, committee shall con conduct their meetings. Shall be conducted. Yeah, shall be conducted at the discretion of the committee chairperson. Um, maybe the committee chairperson may follow or wait, wait, I'm thinking out loud here, but so maybe what I'm trying to say is the committee chairperson, like in their discretion, that may um, involve referring to the the rules of order for the board of directors. That they don't have to do that, but that they they can. And let's see what that specific title is that we adopted. Um, rules of order for board meetings is the is the policy that we may choose. Rules of order for board meetings? As specified in this document or in this manual. Like it? I think it's good. Ben doesn't like the parentheses. Uh, I just, I don't know. The last sentence seems odd to me. May choose in their own discretion. It seems like Jay Maybe is that's the current chairperson, right? Mm -hmm. 
Jay could theoretically say, under that sentence, forget the public, get out of here. No, because that's illegal. No, no. Yeah, but I mean, it just, I don't know. Well, you, you mean, no, but, you that, 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 but that's, isn't that an issue with this sentence? Yeah, it, it might be, but I, I know it's a legal thing, of course, but yeah. like, it just says discretion. So under his discretion, he technically could. No, because in the first policy we have in the in the yeah. book, it says um, that policies that higher laws and ordinances are to be followed. Okay. Um, okay. If that's the case, with that's this. Fine. Also, um, I just have a question in general. Um, at the last CSD meeting, um, the ad hoc committee for outreach was there was uh, Father John was directed as the chairperson. Does that is that not typically how it works, or is that only for He wasn't companies? actually. He wasn't. Oh, it was we, asked we if spoke we should do that. We, we, we then, spoke then, then about was a joke that was made about rock, paper, scissors. Um, yeah, and, yeah uh, but it wasn't in the motion. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Because we specifically decided we're going to leave that up to the committee. We're not going to legislate for the committee. Mm -hmm. It was part of the discussion, though, so yeah. I see where you're coming from. Okay. Sure. Well, well, I mean, so, 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 okay, let, let's let's just try to like work out the worst case scenario here. I mean, like, uh, what if I require everyone to wear a silly hat? <laughs> Go ahead, I'll wear the silly hat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would actually be a very good way to get public outreach. <laughs> just have an entire meeting that you post online. Themes. Like, themes. <laughs> themes. <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. That's, so then what we could do if... Yeah, actually, it, actually, you know, state law actually says that I cannot require you to wear a, a, a silly hat because uh, there can be no requirements to attend the meeting other than... Uh, actually, no, no, there's no requirements to attend the meeting. That's interesting. It, <laughs> at our um, board member best practices training, um, David Aranda, who was the instructor, he was, he's done everything special district, but currently he's a, he's a director on the... Um, SDRMA, Special District Risk Management Authority, a joint powers authority that still is a quasi-special district. Um, and he said that they have a, a dress code policy for the directors. Well, that's an interesting point. Enforceable. For the directors, actually, that can be different. Yeah, actually, no, it was only, the state law only states that I cannot yeah, require yeah. Ben to wear a silly hat. So, and one thing, I'm back in the CSDA policy okay. manual now, and in in the rules of order for board and committee meetings that they have, it says, um, which is similar to how we started ours, um, action items shall be brought before and considered by the board by motion in accordance with this policy. These rules of order are intended to be informal and applied flexibly. That was... Yeah, this is just a side thought um, yeah. with where we could go with this. Yeah. The board refers a flexible form of meeting and therefore does not conduct its meetings under formalized rule. So perhaps, because if, if we're concerned that by it's saying committee shall be conducted at the discretion of the chairperson, maybe we could have it, the chairperson, Kyle, you can unlock that door back <laughs> yeah. if, Ben, would you? It's interesting that every single person who's tried to get in this room has tried that door. I know, <laughs> and it's the dangerous door too because of the, um, because of the what's it called the mat. Yes. Yeah. But perhaps we could have it like the committee chairperson may choose. Thanks, Ben. In their own discretion to follow the rules of order for board meetings as specified in this manual, or to conduct the meeting in an orderly fashion as seen or at their discretion. I don't know. I'm not sure if that makes it easier. I mean, with that, we would ch take out the I think the only thing that changes sentence. is that is that it is that it forces the committee chairperson to do things in an orderly fashion. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> well, I think, I don't think we're asking too much if we ask people to do things in an orderly fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Orderly fashion is pretty vague, mm -hmm. which means it can be hard we to enforce. We can't scream at each other. But I think while well, we're asking, if people put in an effort to just do things in some in a quasi-methodical way, 
don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. So define it where we no, that makes it sound like it's. I don't know yet. Not seeing Are we happy with the intent of what we're trying to do here, though? Like, do we think we're making oh, the right direction? Yeah. To, verify, to verify, the intent is is to make certain that there is an orderly fashion to the. Well, that but by also giving the give the chair some leeway. Yes, I think give the chair some leeway, but not have it so we have committees just doing things however however they want. Like it isn't clear to me that forcing the it to be conducted in an orderly fashion, unless we define orderly fashion, necessarily changes things. But um, in a manner that's conducive to order to. Um, <laughs> A balanced public decision making process. An inclusive public decision making process. Um, I, feel, I, I feel like, I don't know, like we, 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 we I don't want to go too far into the weeds because then <laughs> I feel like at a certain point the policies only serve to be like thrown at people who are trying to interpret them in certain ways. I don't, I don't know. Ooh, and I, this just hit something in my, hit a string in my head that, um, like, because I was just thinking, what if, like, a this bottom part of this policy doesn't make sense? Does it strike the whole policy? We should probably start thinking about placing a policy somewhere in this manual that if, um, if one, because similar things are yeah, in, in a, law. It's a, it's a contract clause called severability. Yes. Um, yeah. So if, uh, if one section of this contract is deemed to be unenforceable under the laws of the jurisdiction of the state of California or the court where it is specified, then um, the rest of this contract will maintain its standing. Something like that's yeah, like a and they have clause. that in the in the law as well. That's a good so, idea. But anyway, yeah, but this, but the the, it is not clear to me that a policy manual needs a sever a severability clause in the sense that I'm not I'm not certain. I, I mean, in a way, our severability clause, because I, I thought about this before, it's, it's not in this, it's, uh, it's, it's the thing that we already put into place, which was the overrides thing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess you're saying that if, if one, eh, hey, we can do something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. and that yeah, wouldn't be in this policy. No, 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 we should add it. But I mean, that could be, like, ooh. if someone's like, that policy yeah. just Is doesn't it? make sense, throw out the policy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 there yeah. are no rules. <laughs> if. But that wouldn't be part of this. Yeah, yeah, I'm just. Oh, you don't want to like talk about it yet? No. Okay. It was just a, a well, tangential. But could you show it so we can see the top? Sorry, of right. at the bridge. I mean, I, I the. How, the, 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 the devious part of me reading the sentence makes it sound like this is a slight on Robert's rules of order, that, that I've said on our rules of order, like there exist, well, you can either choose to conduct your meeting in a manner that is conducive to a balanced and inclusive public decision making process, or if you insist, you can use the rules of order for board meetings, which we do not believe yeah. in saying. I think, <laughs> I think the, 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 in another manner, that's <laughs> yeah. in an, an alternative manner, not to be confused with that. <laughs> <laughs> we actually don't mind the alternative in there. Ben? I just love watching English gymnastics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> also, with what uh, Ethan was talking about, the severability clause, it seems like that should be in there, but just as like a way to say, if the board votes, then it will be thrown back to the policy committee to be amended. That way... That way, there's a way to change it, or change the severability clause, or change the policy. Sorry, change the change the policy that someone feels is. Oh yeah, actually, the board already has a mechanism based on the policies we put into place at the last meeting. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. can just change stuff, and then it's uh, probably on me in order to update a manual and give it to people. 
sounds like they're one step ahead. Yeah. Um, so I think as we have it right now, the second sentence is obsolete. Like, can be st stricken. Like this? Demo? No, no, no. Oh, the second, second sentence. Sen oh, the Committees second sentence. shall be conducted at the discretion of the committee chairperson. So at the first meeting of the committee, the members of the committee shall elect a committee chairperson. The committee chairperson may and count, take up the Now we've removed students. the verb, verb conduct, though. I'm wondering if we should uh, hoist it uh, to... by following the rules of order or in an alternative manner that is conducive to balance and inclusive both. The only thing I... doesn't match in an, like... Doesn't, no, I see. I guess if you're cutting off the or behind the meetings, then that makes sense, but it does as well. Now let's go back to what we had in there. Nope. I don't know. I no, I we, we I don't. like I like the the ending clause specifically, where we use the language conducive to a balanced and inclusive public decision making process. They but, didn't change that. Part. But let's be honest. Balanced and inclusive public decision making process is pretty objective and yeah. subjective I'm, I'm, or objective. Or, uh, I'm sorry, subjective. And I I feel as though this I don't know, I don't want to create a policy that can just be thrown at people. Like you don't want if a if a committee has a contentious decision that comes up and then someone like is the one lone dissent I don't want to create a I, policy that is conducive to them then throwing it at the board and saying this decision was made without an inclusive and balanced public decision making process because like I agree because I objective. believe that, That's the, the reason that, that, that this order was not inclusive exists. because it did not do this thing that I insist is inclusive. Yeah. So then maybe what we want to have in here because the Brown Act, the intent of the law is for it to be a public and inclusive process. So then maybe any other alternative that follows that complies with the Brown Act. Oh, that is perfect. Okay. The only question I would have here is ad hoc committees are different, right? Or do we not make a policy is our ad hoc committees? Oh, I see what you mean. The ad hoc, uh, okay, of First a standing committee. No, no, because oh. I think that we it should still be all one thing, but then to follow the rules of order for board meetings specified in this manual or in any other way that complies with the subject uh, public meeting laws or the public the required public meeting laws, the the appropriate public meeting laws. Public meeting laws is usually you're referring to this. Yeah. Open and public. with any appropriate public meeting laws. But then I still see what Kyle was saying about in any doesn't mm -hmm. match, yeah. like follow, parallel structure with follow. Well, no, but that was when I, I changed I, follows I, to follow I, to. Yeah, and I was just about to talk about follow. Okay. So I think it should be, instead of follow, it should be the committee chairperson may choose in their own discretion to is, conduct yeah. the meeting in accordance. Love it. I don't know if I'd go that far, but... <laughs> I think this is pretty sharp. 
bulletproof unless it butts up against state or federal law. <laughs> <laughs> In which state and federal law can shoot it. Or county ordinance. Or, yep, yeah, county ordinance too. I mean, technically, we don't actually have to specify this. I mean, I, 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 I like it there, though, because yeah. it yeah. gives some potential guidelines. Yeah. Okay, all right. Because it does, again, have that interesting thing. Is like, oh, are you implying that the rules of order for board meetings do not comply with all? Oh, the other way. No, we did, we did fix it the other way. Good. All right. All right. Okay. Any other way? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I think this is good. Okay. I feel proud of this. By saying session. complies with all appropriate public meeting laws, we're not requiring ad hoc committees to comply with anything that they're not required to comply with, right? I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as long as we just continue to That's question right. that with our writing. Yeah. 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 I see okay. what you're thinking with that is that we might be, for example, saying that, like, if, if we specified that. Putting in a higher to, requirement than yeah. is required. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, because, that because it. Oh, okay, wait, no, no. <clears throat> applicable instead of appropriate. Oh, oh my gosh, you're so good. This is great. <laughs> this is great. Okay. That's kind of what I was starting to work out in my mind when I wanted to change to conduct the meeting okay. instead of just follow. Love it. Okay. Is there anything else, or do we want to move it? Do we want to make a policy for um, the committees shall um, compile minutes of their meetings and report back to the board of directors? So I think right now that's informal. Get into an interesting situation with the standing, or I'm sorry, with the ad hoc committees. Then with that, regarding the definition of what a meeting is. Maybe. What is IVRP? Well then, how about, um, The, the committee chairperson shall ensure that information is disseminated, disseminated to I was going like information is available to be to be presented to the board of directors through a report and standing or maybe that should be the next sentence standing committees shall be required to submit their minutes once approved to the board of directors. Or rather it should be approved minutes, I don't know. That's the type of uh, direction I'm going. Board standing committees may be of last sentence. Any recommendations resulting from said review should be submitted to the board via a written or oral report. And wait, did we have that in our copy? Yeah. That's that's kind of what we've been following to. Yeah, so we've been refer we haven't been referring to minutes, we've just been referring to um, yes, written we did. or oral. Oh, okay. Then yeah, maybe this oh, is necessary. I'm okay. sorry, great catch. So we just don't need to do this at all. Okay. Anyone happen to know of a way you know, to turn off page breaks? I know in Word you can just like make it so that you're just looking at 
the text and you aren't seeing the formatting. I don't know how to do it in this one. I know what you're talking about though in Word, yeah. where you just go into web view. Get verbatim. What did you say? I think verbatim should do that for you. It's a completely different Oh, a different thing. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can also use but a different text pages, right? I mean, it's just, use pages. Yeah. Pages. Stuck in the dark ages. I feel like it'd be under view, and if it's not under view, then yeah, there's no yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Okay. So we've got we've got so far is the board shell point standing in ad hoc committees maybe deems necessary, um, and uh, then we've got this the board shell point and publicly announce the members. We've got at the first meeting of the committee, the committee shall elect chairperson and the rules, and then we've got the standing committees may be assigned to review district functions and activities. <coughs> Oh, and we didn't want to include ad hoc at all in the in the committees. Maybe assign go down, go down um, to review district functions activities. Oh, or wait, you, I thought it was correct. not necessary said, because yeah. the board would construct the ad hoc committee with yeah, the purpose yeah. of doing that. Cool. Yeah, agreed. All right. And similar to IVRPD, do we want to have a separate? Um, what, what was the title of this policy? Committees, committees of the board, board directors. Do we want to have a separate policy for committee selection, or should we include it in this one? They have it two different policies. Where we elaborate on how committee selection policy you're talking about? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, I, I think it, it would be better to have, have a separate one? to have a separate section. Okay. Yeah. For the sake of people who are like, oh, I wonder how. And this is then, and so the IVRPD section is entirely about public members. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so perhaps we should specify that in our language if ours is similar. Because I feel like that's. Are we able to just merge Agenda 3 and Agenda 4? Yeah, it's all in their discretion. Discussion. Sure. Okay. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? Okay, then we're going to merge three into four. <laughs> so now we can. Oh, yeah. Chairperson. I've always thought it was just the chair of the committee. The committee chair. Chair is a gender term. Gender neutral. Chair. Wait, wait chair? 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 The <laughs> no. no, I was yeah. thinking, I was going to say chairman is a gender term. Yeah, I just, yeah. I've, always thought, I've always heard it as the chair of the committee. Why is it, why is well, I, I, I think chairman is much more common than just chair. Yes, yeah, or yeah, I, th I think it's when you it's when you have one person, it's chair, and when you have like as you were saying, like you, you can have like you know the the, the, the chairman of a we have multiple now because you know do chairs is that something people would say the committee chairs or the committee mm -hmm. yeah chair yeah I've heard people say chairs okay, I don't right, right. well in that case in that in that case then yeah mm -hmm. so are you down with chairperson. Yeah, I'm down with both, but like, I mean, we've said chair so much that it doesn't sound like a word anymore. You know, uh, European yeah. so. All, that, all my words from now on is just like gibberish, so. I don't know, it's starting to hit me too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't bring that up next time. Oh, I like chairperson. <laughs> you prefer chairperson to chair? I, I think I think chairperson is good. Prefer it to chair? Yeah, chairperson. You think so? I think so. Okay. Um. So everyone's going to be a person who serves in this role, right? <laughs> <laughs> no cats. I don't Man, think we I was, to specify that. I but. was hoping it was going to be a robot. <laughs> I had a computer program all lined up to be chair. <laughs> Part of me believes you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should. I wasn't kidding. Uh, Jay stops coming to the meetings just like has AI instead. Well, see, we have also, uh, we, we've got wording in here that it allows me to just conduct the meeting at my discretion as long as it is uh, applicable to public meeting law, so... Yeah. Actually, a question about that. Yeah. Is there, like, couldn't you guys, instead of just use a program like Dragon to take minutes? If it I mean, proves, cool that way. would have to have. It, like, because like Dragon would just record like, every single thing yeah. that everyone says. Yeah. It would be, it'd be kind of like, yeah, it would be kind of complicated in some cases, but, but yeah, I see what you mean. I don't, 
Yeah. A minutes that are literally everything that everyone says start becoming less useful oh, than at yeah, least because if you've ever read transcriptions, so I I spent oh, way yeah. too long in the linguistics department, and when you read a transcription, it makes no sense. I mean, the sentence I just provided, if you read that, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> like think about when you read quotes from Donald Trump, oh, but, they don't but you don't sense. hear them. But you don't hear them. They yeah, but did they make sense? sense. No, they don't make, they don't make no, but, any sense. That's what but, I'm saying. But did yeah. they make sense when you heard them? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So, but so uh, did you be like chairperson or did we just want to have... Yeah, I'm yeah he was a pro he chairperson. Wanted chairperson. You seem to want it. I don't have an opinion. So. Okay, I will provide an opinion mild towards chair, but it doesn't matter. So, yeah, chairperson. Okay. Yeah, one for. Do you want me to make my case for chairperson? And everyone else, I keep hearing like I've, the only time I've heard the word chairperson has been this meeting, yeah, and so ever. I feel like if we put this in the yeah. thing, everyone is constantly going to be like, "What's well, a chair?" Isn't it? And we're going to be like, "No, it's the chairperson." Well, the way that I would see it is that the chair is just shortened for chairperson. It's cool. The I don't really care. I was just I provide. This is yeah. just the most yeah. mild preference that I've yeah. ever, and it doesn't. It's just, yeah, we so are I'm way sure. in the chairperson. Weeds. Yeah, we are so deep I'm in the weeds that we can taste the soil. Oh, it's good. <laughs> okay. So. If anything, I think that it shows our commitment to using gender neutral language. Love it. I think is yeah, yeah. yeah, it's great. Okay. So, did we want? Do we want to? Uh, like, are we done talking about this section? Do we want to commit it to motion? Do we want to start editing other things? Then come back and do oh. motion collection later. Can we read it one more time and then? Yeah. Would you like me to read it out loud? Would you like to just read it? You know what? Maybe I'll, I think I, I might move it. Okay. And, and, and I'll read it. But before I do that, can we maybe add like um, just a number next to each section? Great idea. Cool. All right, Mr. Chairperson, I have a motion. I move to recommend to the Board of Directors adoption of the following policy. Policy title, Committees of the Board of Directors. One, the Board shall appoint standing and ad hoc committees as may be deemed necessary or advisable by the Board. The duties and membership of each committee shall be determined at the time of formation. A standing committee shall exist in perpetuity to carry out its function unless otherwise directed by the Board of Directors. An ad hoc committee shall be considered dissolved when its final report has been made. Two, the Board shall appoint and publicly announce the members of the standing committees for the ensuing year no later than the Board's first regular meeting in January. Three, at the first meeting of the committee, the members of the committee shall elect a committee chairperson. The committee chairperson may choose, in their own discretion, to conduct the meetings in accordance with the rules of order for board meetings, as specified in this manual, or in any other way that complies with all applicable public meeting laws. Four, the board's standing committees may be assigned to review district functions, activities, and or operations pertaining to their designated concerns. Set assignments may be made by the committee chairperson, a majority vote of the board, or on their own initiative. Any recommendations resulting from said review should be submitted to the board via a written or oral report. Second. I think I said it different than that. I think okay. I said I move to recommend okay. that, that, the, that board the board of directors, of directors adopt, adopt the, the following policy. You changed. And I did read reading. policy title. Yeah, you, you did read policy title. I did. Okay. All right, good. Okay. And yeah, uh, he said he said meetings, and then you changed it. Yeah, I you said meetings, uh, so I added the s. It's okay, like I don't think s. it changes the character of the. Of the intent or anything. I amend my motion to take out any S in that word. Okay. 
search in a place. <laughs> Friendly with the second. Okay. Um, did we have policy title in the other ones? No, but it was written there, and I I'd be happy to amend my motion to take it out. Wait, and allow that we for. We did. We did have the policy title wasn't something that was. I didn't have it in the ones that I submitted. Yeah, these just have adopt the following no. policy minutes of district proceedings. Yeah, and I think that at, at, at my discretion, I was under the impression, actually, I guess I, guess I wasn't. Well, I, I think it'll be at the discretion of Jay, who's yeah. in charge yeah. of compiling So were you, were you going to amend and remove it? Yes, if that's friendly. Friendly. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, input from members of the public on final. Um, I was just wondering about the first one. Okay. Um, the duties and membership of each committee shall be determined at the time of formation. Does that assume that it cannot be changed? It do, I mean, does that also apply to the composition of membership <coughs> and the number of members? It's just my question. No, the, the composition would be determined by the board when they create the committee. We could specify what? initial, and that solves any complaint there. I guess, I guess item number four, or agenda item number, previously number three, about yeah. adding the public. Yeah. So would adding the public, according to this, have to occur during the formation of how about if we add it? So we have the duties and membership of each committee shall be determined at the time of formation, um, subject to change by a majority vote of the, of the board. Friendly. Okay. Is that grammatically correct, though? It is. It is. The only thing I can think Sounds of is I, I keep wanting to add A between by and majority, but that might be wrong. Oh, I see what you're saying. Just add it. Ben wants me to add it. Sure. Okay, I'm sorry. Kyle, what were you saying? I feel like both versions are functional, but like adding A does not make it. Yes. Just makes it a different Probably. clause, but like not a less grammatically correct clause. So are you okay with the comma subject, though? Does that look right? Um, I feel like subject to change has become such a <coughs> phrase that it doesn't matter. But like, it also might be subjected to change. But I think subject is fine because subject to change is just a thing that people say. Like, I don't think anyone's going to question it. I don't think anyone's going to question it either. Okay, and perhaps I can look into the, the grammar of that following this meeting and if I find something <laughs> crazy I'll let everyone know. Okay. All right. Um, so I'd like to amend my motion to include these most recent changes. Probably. Do you want to just quickly just read this out loud? It's literally just this. Wait. Did you, Subject you have to change to? by majority vote of the board. Okay. Ooh. Oh, friendly. Okay. Roll call. What was Spencer asking? That's okay. Nothing. Okay. Sure. It was about the process by which you were doing that. It's fine. Okay. Roll call vote. Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. Jay? Aye. Motion passes 3 0. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to use the restroom really quickly. Okay. We are taking a momentary recess. Okay, uh, I will call this meeting back to order at 5.12 p.m. All right. Okay, committee selection policy is what we were about to do or not? Mm -hmm. Okay. So my, my question with this is, it says when a position on the district committee becomes open, what I'm thinking there was, does that mean that there's a specified amount of seats on it? Yeah, that does sound like what that sounds Which I don't think is defined yeah, in their no, policy no, manual. Not. Oh, man, we're knocking this thing. <laughs> we should become public members of their yeah. policy. <laughs> <laughs> Show up and heckle. <laughs> we're we're auditing it.
Well, if the if the board of directors declared that there was a position that was open on a committee, then that position would need to be filled. So what you're saying is that Oh, wait, no, I see what you're saying. What is an open committee position? I think that's what we need to... We know what a committee position is. <laughs> what about if... What, right. what makes it an open so, so, uh, position? So, um, I, have, I have a process question, I guess, which is that this committee, this, this item was forwarded to our board by, by George Thurlow, as I mentioned earlier, and I kind of know based on what he has been saying at the other meetings, why he forwarded it. And is the one of the goals, like should we consider that and should I, like, like do we all know what that is? Should no, I actually, be, if you can know. Okay. I mean, I might once you mention it. If, am, am I allowed to? I, I, I did not obtain this by talking to George. I obtained this by, by seeing George make statements during the public meetings that we've had. Sure, and this is uh, well. You're you're about to describe the yeah. the direction of a director who yeah, and it's but it's related to right. another committee, is but, the, but, it, but we're not just making decisions about that committee. But it, in a way, it's a funny thing is that we're enabling the goal of another committee in the port sort. And I'm hoping it's okay. I mean, it's just, it's out of the discretion of the chair. <laughs> All right, let, let's let I'll start saying it, and if you're like no 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 okay, okay. so um uh, the internship committee, um, George uh, made a statement that it would be great to be able to get um, somebody from political science uh, and somebody from the Santa Barbara City College at that board, on the board in fact, such, sorry, not the board, on the committee, so that we would be able to um, have, not we, so that they, he would, they would be able to have discussions that actually involved the people who were Include like essentially like like central, yeah, yeah, to be at the to be at the table who were central to the to the internship process, um, and that was um, when he first brought up the idea that we should get public members on this, and then that was also then I believe the context during the board meeting when this had come up, um, but it does mean that there was kind of a guiding intent towards who would it would even be, uh, and I'm not I'm not certain if we want to like. Make, make certain that that happens, or if we don't believe that that should happen, or if, um, but, but like I just, the, the process as listed here would, for example, um, it, this sounds more like there would be an opening, and then Ben would say, hey, I will put in an application and all the FPVC information, and please consider me for this, whereas it sounded more like what George was intending to have is specific groups represented as decided by the committee. So perhaps what we'd want to proceed um, any language like this with would be um, if a committee decides that the yeah maybe not. if a committee decides or rather to start that over maybe um, committees may recommend to the board of directors that a, well, rather than trying to wordsmith this real quick, what I'm trying to say is a committee may vote to recommend to the board of directors that, or maybe before they recommend, a committee may decide that they would like additional members and may recommend to the board of directors that the board take action to facilitate that process. Um, and I think we have to find out a really good way of wording that, but is that something, like, between the three of us, do we think that that should be something that's initiated in committee? I think it should still be able to be initiated at the board level, but then that's everything in this. Yeah, as long as we make sure that it can still be initiated at the board level, then, yeah, the committee should be able to initiate it too. Okay, so the idea is that the committee decides they want just a public spot, or is the idea that the committee has decided that they want 
a particular kind of public member, or has the committee decided that they want that? What is the intent here? <coughs> a, a, a member of the public, an interested member of the public, and then just like any the, any interested, like 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 yeah, like the committee states need, their intention that they would like to have a member of the public on their committee, and then that is what gets forwarded to the board, and then the board makes a. I think so. Yeah. I don't think we need to create this duality where we consider we create an entirely new class of appointments for people that represent another organization. They should go through the process just like everyone else should. Did you have an opinion? That needs to be consent. The person has to want to join. Yeah, well, yeah, that's. Yeah, we can't compel anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I it's think a that's warrant. probably why the policy department may or may not end up on the committee. What do you mean? If they don't want to deal with the bureaucracy and they want to just say, we have the power as UCSB, then they don't have to join the committee and they can still, they still have all the leverage they need, basically. I think. I don't necessarily. I don't know. Like that. I don't <laughs> not yeah, I don't necessarily agree with the the it's, latter half of what you said, but I understand what you mean. It's I don't necessarily. Agree people can participate without example, joining the team. So yeah. I think it was a bad example, but I think. The idea yeah, even I'll say that that example. But when you if you actually talk to people, political science, they so don't want control of anything. <laughs> horrible example, but I guess we get the yeah. idea. Behind it. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna type something really dumb, and then we can, okay. Go for it. No, I'm only doing board of directors. <coughs> This is just like clearly a doesn't say anything particularly <laughs> and is overly verbose. Yeah. But it's a skeleton. I can also will not care at all if you just say Jay just deleted it somehow. No, no, I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> Committees may perhaps rather than might. We might. I, 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 I for well, now, just put this down. Yeah. And then Ethan might one say, one no. Like, yeah. okay. So when it says an interest in having a public member on their committee, implication of specific of a specific person. I see what you're doing. Yeah, I see the issue there. Um, in uh, having public membership. The reason why I used A was to indicate like just by saying uh, we want public membership, it's might not be like, well, we want three public members. We want two public members. So like, uh, and so uh, by saying public membership, then it's, it maybe it makes the board of directors be like, OK, you're going to get eight. So we didn't want that much. We weren't prepared for that. But well, but how, how many public members they get is going to be incumbent upon how many people apply, right? Because we can't give them eight if there aren't eight people who apply. Yeah, but the concern would be that they only wanted two, and we'd put eight on them. Well, I think that we should not tie the hands of the board in, say, in, in saying that, you know, if we get eight people who want to join this committee, then there must be a lot of interest in this committee, and we're going to have to reevaluate how many people and at least have that discussion in a public setting about how many people we want in this committee. And if the people who are on the committee say, we think that it would be able to function better if we only had these two who are members, who are voting members, then we would be able to discuss that in a public setting, you know? Okay. Ethan? I, th I echo that. Kyle? Also, I think um, the whole process they determine, it's like, I feel like a way to clear that up is that like, 
some of the application or like whatever deciding process you have should be determined by the committee itself. So like when they say like, oh, we're going to request that the board give us like, like a certain number or like, you know, like it doesn't necessarily have to be the same request each time. Like you don't have to say like, we want public membership and then the board gives you however many or whoever or whatever. Like you could have some sort of like request that is like, oh, we want like one representative from this community and like also two just general public members that like don't have to fit into any sort of category. Um, and like OH enumerate that, that that's not um, exclusive to the board, but like exclusive there's a lot to unpack in that. Yeah, so I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm thinking is I started turning like, like criteria, but that makes it sound like you know, they're gonna make the decision in a way. Yeah. Then guidance started to seem like almost too loose. Like, is it, like the, the goal being that they there's some, what's the word? I mean, I don't think you, you necessarily have to have any of, any of the specificity in this yeah. policy. Like you can just, whenever you make the motion, say like, we motion to like to um, have have the board approve or whatever you're going to say. Um, one public member um, from this, and then like two that represent this group, or like you can have that all like in the specifics of the actual motion instead of in the policy in general. Mm -hmm. Or you could just say with some specifications. That's what I was saying earlier. Like if you specify, like say the, the committee can specify. Because the board also can just say, no, you don't get it, or no, we want two instead of one. Technically, right? Mm -hmm. Because it really, they, anything that comes from the committee is just guidelines. I mean, like we could, like, yeah, but that's why, yeah. 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 So but I mean, the committee's decision don't act like they don't have weight. I think, right. the, I think the big thing, before we go any further, I just want to address one thing, which is that I don't want to make any distinction between people who represent a specific organization and members of the public. I feel that's unnecessary and like hierarchical. Okay. Right. And we kind of already talked about that. And I think arrangements like that should be ad hoc committees. Arra arrangements where there are representatives. I mean, we can have representatives on said committee, but they need to go through the same process. Yeah, and then also maybe it's good when, if it's like a particular stakeholder that you're doing, have a joint meeting of, of the, yeah, that's the committee and the leadership team of X organization. That is that is my opinion on that. Yeah. Is is that is that rather than rather than taking scenarios where um, we want to have input from another group, we put them on the board or committee. Instead, we figure out ways of actually bringing them together. Yes, yeah. and there are even formalized ways of doing this if we ever cared, like a joint powers authority. Yeah, um, but, but even if it was yeah, just yeah. Um, a joint meeting of the yeah. of the X committee with the Isla Vista Youth Project's leadership team. Yeah. Even though they're not a Brown Act compliant group, we can still bring them into our tent and yeah. have a joint meeting. And then the people who are voting on it would just be the people who are actually on the committee. Right. Yeah. Or any, they're voting on any motions that are relevant to our board would just be the people who are actually on the committee. All right, I'm gonna go pick up the pizza from oh, across the street. Good. Though I don't think you need to recess. I'm fine if you keep discussing this. You still have a quorum. Okay, well, I was actually then going to go, I'm gonna go to the bathroom now. Okay, while recess. That. <laughs> so. Is that the discretion of the chair? Yeah. I'll be here. Okay, so, okay, so wanna keep going? Mm -hmm. Okay, call this meeting back to order at 5.43 p.m. Everyone's still here. Okay, committee selection policy. A wrap. So committees may have their prerogative to decide an interest in having public membership on their committee. This decision can be recommended by the board of, to the board of directors, which can choose to appoint a member of the public to the committee. We declare. Oh, that I like so much better. Maybe this can be recommended. I was going to say the same thing. All right. Can be recommended.
maybe members of the public instead of a member. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say next. We're all on the same page. Members We're all reading at the same. Yeah, speed. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So the process, I think, should be more standardized mm -hmm. because when you have, uh, again, if the, if the goal of the policy is to create something that's consistent and um, something that can't be manipulated to attain, attain pernicious ends, Sounds I good think to the me. process needs to be set a suggestion? and not made up along the way. I think that the... Um, the, the board should be in charge of soliciting letters of interest from the public. And for that, I think we can kind of follow what IBRPD does. Let me pull that up. Okay, well, I've got it up here. Or I think, oh, do they not mention letter of interest? They mention applications. Notice that says uh, applications for district committees shall consist of a one page maximum letter from the applicant oh. that details why she, he should be considered to be a member of the committee and completed FPBC, a completed FPBC form 700. Mm. Oh, for applicants for the personnel, personnel committee. committee. And that's because in conflict of interest code 1090, mm -hmm. it specifies that um, it is a financial, specifically financial unit. Well, well. Oh, see, they've, they've got they've got and other committees is directed by the board of directors. So we could actually have that mm -hmm. wording in there and just remove the personnel committee. Like if we were to okay. do this. So we're we just looking at that last paragraph right now. Applications um, for a district committee should consist of a one-page maximum letter. But also the openings for district committees. Well, because that, I mean, there's a lot of things we're going to need to change in that. Because this is requiring us to spend money to advertise something, which is not something that we necessarily have. And also references a district bulletin board, which is not something we have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good idea. Of the meeting location. Are there any local papers with free classifieds for a public announcement like this? Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure the independent is, but I'm not sure. For free? I mean, that no. might just be online. That sounds more likely. Because I've, I've done it, um, but I'm not sure if it went okay. or not. Well, here's something else to think about. I personally want to make sure that this is something that people can submit online. And it's anticipated that we're going to have some sort of the district website coming up soon. So, for what it's worth, I feel like applications are direct district committees shall consist of a one page maximum letter. The applicant details why, if you were to email us a PDF file or FPC 7, that would comply. Yeah. Like, I, don't think I guess what I'm saying is that we have a website that's going to come before the board. Mm -hmm. The board may or may not approve that and say, this is good, we like this then we'll have a framework for which things can be added to. How is that going to interact with the timeline for committees wanting to seek letters of um, the interest from, letter, from letters to the public? So you mean the, the first part? 
the, the posting part. Mm -hmm. um, because we can't put in there right now well, that this that that the person running the website <laughs> like puts that on the website because the website does not exist. <laughs> it's still something that the board is going to have to decide on. Hopefully soon we'll have a website. And hopefully soon we'll have all that stuff on it. But yeah. Um, but I then also where it says at the bottom, the application details shall be included in all advertising and posting. Those are details to be decided at a future date. I don't know if that satisfies your procedural. Oh, I took application details to mean that the applications shall consist of a one-page maximum letter and whether or not it requires the NFPBC Form 700. And how you submit it. And how you, oh, it's okay, yeah. Perhaps. Sure. But are you suggesting you note it to the sentence, or are you suggesting? No, I'm okay. just, and I'm not even sure of that. I guess what I'm, I guess what I'm saying so. is that, I mean, I know this is something we can go back and amend, I suppose. I think that if we bring a website online, that needs to be codified in this policy. So maybe we do. I agree with that. Um, one way, yeah. One thing we could do is we could wait for a website and then add it. Or one thing we could do is, is we could just keep adding a lot of language. Like if the district maintains a website, then that website will. <laughs> yeah. Is there a third option? Maybe there's probably a lot more. What did you guys? Can you just say, was, can you just say, like this will be this is language assuming that this occurs. So this can be either this can be amended and fully adopted at a later meeting when the website exists. It, or it's, it's implied that all policies can be amended. We can add a policy. Process. We can add a policy which states that all policies which mention a website will not apply until such time as the district has a website. I think that's actually a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, I, I, and I don't we know. can also wait until we have a website. Yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that. If a committee comes before the board, ugh, I can't even say this. Uh, it's brown <laughs> stuff. Never mind. Okay. I think that we've all dis discussed our interest in having some sort of a website process for that, and we can leave it at that. Yeah. And another thing that we can add in here that it doesn't necessarily already say is committee, and this could, if we wanted to bring about this policy, it could be committee openings shall be announced at all meetings of the board of directors for two same period two weeks two weeks it's not just board meetings not just committee meetings it's all any meetings it should be board meetings right it should, it should be, be board, board meetings, meetings. Yeah. yeah that'd be awkward what does it mean to be announced at a board meeting for two weeks like for example let's there's say an agenda item. Let's say that... No, it doesn't. We could add that. But I was thinking just announcement. I meant more like, for example, let, let, there's, there's that one... Um, there's that one... Okay. If there is a fifth Tuesday of the month, then at a board meeting, we would decide to open an uh, application process. And then the following two weeks, there are no board meetings. So, uh, like... We're not, like measuring board meetings in terms of weeks to me seems weird. Good point. Um, well, I mean, that same situation would come up with IVRBD too, since they only have one regularly scheduled. But they don't have month. this clause in their policy. They, they, they don't oh, care about announcing this isn't from that. Yeah, no, that was something that was being added. Oh, so okay. That makes more sense. All they have is, yeah, just. require people to get a megaphone mm -hmm. and just go up, just scale the top of Stork Tower every day. <laughs> we should require the members of the public to do that. <laughs> I want to be on this committee. Okay. I'm command effing various board of supervisors agendas to see if they, if and how they agendize these things. Because, I mean, it should be a requirement that it gets agendized. Yeah. Um, so the language doesn't really 
it doesn't specifically address the instance that um, Jay mentioned that Director Thurlow envisioned. So for example- We kind of indirectly implied that we weren't supporting that use case when Spencer was talking about making positions that were specific to organizations not being different from right. positions. That organizations if, can't be different. If, if the if, board if, is appointing someone, or if the board is saying we want to appoint someone, then the board can also say, like, shouldn't the board also say, we would prefer a person of, like, well, in some situations, it seems like it would be beneficial for the board to do that. Well, okay, so here's the thing. If, and I'm gonna use a different example other than internship committee, if we have a, um, if we're here on policy committee, we find that it would be a good idea to appoint someone from the IVRBD's policy committee. Well, uh, that's not even representing here, here. them. That wouldn't be representing them, though. It if, could be, though. It could be, okay, so let's say this hypothetical. This person is going to be representing IVRPD because IVRPD's board of directors has directed, um, like, has decided that they're going to help us. They've taken official action that says we're going to help the IVCSD formulate a policy manual. And this person, let's just call them person A, they decide to submit a letter of interest to be involved in our policy committee, to sit on the policy committee and be a member. If the board of directors wants to put that person on the policy committee, that person can be on the policy committee and they can represent that organization. It's just that we are not, I do not want to delineate that there's a difference between committee members who are representing an organization versus committee members who are just members of the public because at the end of the day, the, the only classification that matters is the members of the board and everybody else when we're dealing with who gets put on a committee. Because otherwise, it's, it's like unnecessarily hierarchical in my opinion. I'm now wondering at like a high level legal issue whether, and it's not like a, not a problem we've run into, but like something that like we, we might need to understand at some point. Can a member of the public who gets appointed by anybody to the thing be somebody who lives outside the district? So because yeah. like when the board of supervisors appointed Bob, they had to do a waiver. They had to do a waiver of that clause. Uh, based uh, on based on the, I think I would imagine I don't know that that. Yeah, that's like under a different set of law. So, yeah. It was a different, totally different yeah. law that governed who could be on a board versus who could be on a committee, potentially. Yeah. But then if the committee is an extension of the legislative body, perhaps, mm. yeah, we should check it out. Only we had legal representation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out where to go with this one, because, I mean, out of everything we've discussed today, this is something we've actually been directed yeah. <laughs> to take care of. Um, so kind of, sorry, going back, the reason I, I agree with Spencer, but the reason I say that is because, for example, in that situation, where I see RPD saying that we, or the, the CSD is requesting, like, what if the CSD requests someone? Like, for example, that, would, that should not be a thing. We shouldn't request people. I mean, it can be an informal request. Like, hey, you should be, apply for this. Not, not, but, not, yeah. Like, not specifically Spencer should apply for this, but like, we would, but specifically, like, getting the information to a group. And, but say, like you're still a member of the public, but say you're a member of the public, but we think that we, sh this specifically, we're giving this information to the political science department, or we are giving this information to the RPD. The distribution of information is the prerogative. It, that's at the discretion of board members or anyone in the public once it's public information. Okay, so that doesn't really matter then. It's a non issue. No. Awesome. So one thing that could, could definitely come up is like, came up here, for example, um, for a policy committee, although oh, it's such a dream. Uh, maybe we've, we want a member of the public who has legal experience. Um, like, is it Imagine something where that. we can request, yeah, where we can request to the board, I guess it's sort of, we were talking about like the guidelines, criteria sort of thing before, but like, not that we want somebody from political science on it, but that we want somebody who speaks Spanish, that we want somebody who 
um, has expertise in architecture, has... I really think those should all be informal yeah, requests. I, like I don't think okay. there should be a formalized process for us to make those requests. I think okay. that the board should be weighing the concerns of committees as a priority okay. when they cool. make determinations. Yeah, and based on what we have here right now, so I think maybe, I think we're happy with everything except that middle part with the openings for district committees shall be advertised section, right? I was okay with that one. But oh, you. Oh, okay. I'm actually okay with that one, but that's because under an assumption that we will soon have a website, and then we'll, when we do, we will go back through every policy we've made and see if any of them are applicable to be well, changed. But wait, but what about local papers? papers? Oh, I'm sorry. I missed. Wait, where is it? For the first line that bleeds into the second. Oh, my. Okay. We, okay. I, 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 okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah, no, that's, one, that's one of my, my general problems is, right, is making yeah. policies that we can't satisfy. <laughs> um, By the way, what's really annoying... I think this is just going to be... like we're Obviously, we've already discussed how we're going to have to go back and amend this policy. I think that that's going to have to be something that is amended to. Like, we just don't have the means to... Are there any legal just, requirements about us advertising in papers? I've been trying to find that. You don't know? Okay. Um, but you haven't like found it like quickly. Like, no. there's some, like, I, like I was checking on something else related to public members today, and I thought it was going to take me forever, and I found it like within yeah. three minutes. I've only, like, that was I've only found this in policy. Okay. Yeah, the only thing I think that's a legal requirement for that involves the press is that if a member of the press acting on behalf of said organization asks or if they want to put on a press distribution list, then you have to put them on a press distribution list. Okay. I can say as the secretary thus far, I have not received any requests from members of the press to be put on my press distribution list. But a curiosity, if I if I were a member of the press and I were trying to figure out how to do that, wouldn't it just tell me to talk to Gina? I think that's or my Ethan. name on there. Yes, yeah, Gina. Gina. Yeah, yeah. I've been checking and my people email. have reached out to Gina to ask to be put on a distribution list. Thank you. See ya who aren't members of the press, okay. and I have had those requests forwarded to me, cool. and I have forwarded on those requests, if that person is a member of the public, to Jonathan Boot at Self Governance Initiative for okay. board direction. Okay. All right. So are you, was the suggestion that we just remove that part then? And Knowing that we have later? to come back to yeah. it. Yeah. And then if there's a legal requirement, well, we'd have to do it anyway, so it's yeah. not like putting it in policy change. Yeah, because we already right. have the clause. Because we need to bring yeah. something back yeah. to the yeah. board. Uh, should we have a requirement that they be agendized uh, at any meetings taking place within those two weeks? Any board meetings that take place within that period? That they be agendized? That they I think the announced is better. I like announced better, actually. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So they don't have to be in writing. Even announced on the agenda to me? Well, but that's something, again, I don't know what people want. Okay. Announced so on the agenda, that's good. That's what IVRPD does. They do, and they have that as a sub section of their public comment period. So maybe I should look into doing something like that. I wish I could find something about the, where the Board of Supervisors was soliciting this very thing. So in selecting members of the public, Committees can suggest guidelines to the board. The board cannot make those guidelines a requirement, but they can use those guidelines as selection criteria. Is, is that right? We don't, I don't think currently the wording, they could make them a requirement. Like, I think the wording currently allows them to make it a requirement. It's that the committee cannot make it a requirement to the board. That the right, committee right. is making requests to the board, and then the, the board will come up with, will, 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 will request applications. The applications will have this letter, but we haven't actually specified yet any 
mechanism by which, I mean, the board could just say, all right, we're just going to throw them up in the air, and the one that lands closest to George is his new committee member. Okay, and then... The, the very nature of the committee is that it can make suggestions, and that's what it would be. That's like, right, right. that's it's, all it can do, so right, it would be a suggestion. That's a good thing, but I'm just asking, so the committee, the board can choose to completely ignore it, the suggestion, or it can say that that is the single criteria for with which it chooses who to to pick, but it also cannot it also cannot specifically say we are we want a group with this w that fills this requirements. We are not specifically specifically going to send it to them. We are just going to make it known to the public and hope that this group with this specific set of required skills well, ends up applying. I don't think that that's the, the way that it would actually end up happening in practice. I think that in practice, there, I mean, if it were me, personally, acting as a member of a committee that was soliciting a representation from a body and was going to go through this process, as part of the motion, I would want to see someone, preferably the president, or not the president, the chair of the committee, directed to go and make an announcement. I would hope that we wouldn't even have the direct person do that. I would hope that it's just implied, but maybe direction would be necessary. But I think the answer to the first part of your question where it's the board can ignore the criteria if they wanted, the board can ignore anything that the committee suggests yeah. because it is a suggestion. Yeah. And I also don't think any of us at this meeting have the information we need about equal opportunity for appointments. I think that's something we should all look into before we even discuss we like ask a legal appointment. <laughs> well, I mean, no. We can go and see what other I mean, yeah, other yeah, yeah. special yeah. districts do. For are they are they looking for people with specific skills, or anyone who lives in the district is welcome to apply? We should check that out. One story I can tell, which uh, I think applies to some of what uh, Spencer's asking about, is this, so. A year and a half ago, a year ago, I applied. Yeah, I guess it would have to have been this was a. Almost two years ago, I applied to be the public member of LAFCO. And the process for that was that they had an app, uh, send a letter to, the, um, uh, to Paul Hood, who's the executive officer of LAFCO, uh, as specifying your, uh, your qualifications and your reasons for doing it. And they advertised that in some ludicrous newspaper that no one read. Um, f and uh, they got back one application, which was me, um, by the deadline. And then there were like, so Paul was like, the last time we did this, we got back eight applications. This is broken. Like, clearly we're doing something wrong. And they then had a discussion about what other places to make certain to send applications to. And, um, and during this, uh, Janet um, specified that she would be reaching out to the women's political group about getting more people there to know that this is occurring and that um, Paul suggested uh, more newspaper ads and then a question came up about like well the expense of the newspaper ads and we actually have somebody who actually applied and but like they had these conversations about how to get more uh, people and how to direct the noticing um, but it wasn't it wasn't like we it, have to do this. We have to do this. It's that like, oh yeah, we, in addition to doing the noticing that we have to do, let's also have Janet send it to the um, Women's uh, Political Committee. Uh, let's also have um, another newspaper ad. Let's also... Um, mm -hmm. So it seems like that type of setup for the discussion should be in the policy as well. Okay. That's, that's, I think that clarifies it. Does each person real quick want to go and look at a different special district's policy on this? Online if you want I'm I'm looking at Galita Water. If you guys want to look at some other see if you find anything. Okay. Galita West. Some of these websites might be a little hard to navigate. These websites stress me out. Okay, we have agendas.
I just want to say for the record, eventually we should make a recommendation to the board direct whoever maintains the website to put the policy manual online. They do not see the policy manual for Goleta West. I don't see it for Goleta Water. I do see it for Goleta Cemetery, which wasn't really where I was going. That's, that's a thing? Yes. So this is your financial information that's required by law. School year budgets, reserve fund policy. Okay, let's try going to see it. So, I don't think Goleta Sanitary District's administrative code contains anything regarding the process by which um, you could get on a committee, which is frustrating. And uh, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that we might have a little more interest in so what I do people have serving a committee. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm finding is IVRPD is. Um, <coughs> like policy for standing committees and ad hoc committees is right out of the CSDA sample policy, but the CSDA sample policy manual does not have the separate committee selection policy. So LAFCO does, they're not a special district, but LAFCO does have policies for um, the public member, that position. So the public member and one alternate public member are appointed by the other six commissioners. The San Bernardino LAFCO policy for recruiting public member is as follows. San Bernardino, did I, oh, I got, maybe I got a random LAFCO, but it doesn't matter. Upon announcement that a vacancy for the public member or alternate public member will exist, the executive officer shall, one, publish and post a vacancy notice inviting all interested citizens of San Bernardino County to apply within 30 days. The notice shall be published and posted as follows. Posted at the LAFCO staff office, on the LAFCO website, at the regular LAFCO hearing chamber, and at the the scroll Board of Supervisors hearing chamber, any other location directed by the commission, publish a notice of vacancy in newspapers of general circulation in the county and provide mailed notice of vacancy to all city clerks, the secretary to the board of directors of all independent special districts and the clerk of the board of directors, and issue a press release for the purpose of further advertising the vacancy. The executive officer shall accept no application after the expiration of the 30 days and shall forward all applications to the members of the commission. Only applications received by the executive officer may be can be considered for appointment. A review period of not less than 10 days shall follow the 30-day application period. 
makes me actually wonder whether or not there was such a policy with Santa Barbara LAFCO, in which case I should be the public That's member right exactly now. exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> the commission may select a personnel committee from among its membership for the purpose of pre reviewing applications and bringing its recommendations to the full commission. And pursuant to government code section 56325, the public and alternate public member candidate must receive an affirmative vote from at least like that's, that's just lack of policy. Okay. And seeing this, like, I think I think that when comparing this with our board, the closest comparison is like the public member is kind of similar to the county member or the university yeah. member. But as far as it applying to committees, what I take out of this, one thing that we could add to ours is issue a press release for the purpose of further advertising the vacancy. That would be something that I think maybe, that would be good because yeah, that maybe. would make it. That would kind of be in my mind in lieu of the fact that we don't have the resources to put an ad in a newspaper. Yeah. I don't know, I think we would get more reach if we did it like that too. Right, and I know DOS's office did that, the first district office, they came and sent out a press release on behalf and I saw their ad. And on behalf of? The first district office seeking commission appointments. Mm -hmm. But we should find out a different word to use for vacancy, I think. DOS has a nice looking letterhead I know because I made it, so. For his supervisors? That's interesting, they don't all have the same. I just modeled it after what he had in the assembly. But I say that because we're gonna need something like that. Are you looking to have the board choose among the suggestions, or are you just looking at it as a suggestion and then the board just does whatever the hell they want? Just a suggestion. Okay. I think yeah. the committees are at the discretion to do what they please. If they want to suggest a specific person, they can, but we're talking about when they initiate the process by saying, we would like members of the public to join our committee, or we have a vacancy from a member of the public who's now gone and I don't want to get into a situation where we have all the letters and then we bring it back we wait we skip over a board meeting that we could have heard of that but then we forward it to the committee they look at it and then we go to the next board meeting which is the board meeting after the one where we could have inserted that because I don't want to just create unnecessary bureaucratic hurdles you know yeah. so that would be my only concern with that but I think that Again, the, the biggest thing for me, and this isn't unfortunately something that we can say in policy, is that I, it's my personal opinion that board members should really be weighing the weight of what the specific committee says, because, or what, what members on the board, um, not necessarily speaking on behalf of the committee, but what, what they have to say, because they're all on that committee and they were in the meeting and they were participating in it, and I wasn't. So, I don't know. I. I just don't feel comfortable making a policy where we add a, another layer of hurdle that I think is, I, I just think it's success. Like, I don't, I don't know what we're getting out of it. No, I think I'll say is that at some point, the board, if a majority of the board wants to do something, the majority of the board right now could just change the policy. So the majority of the board is just like, we cannot actually make policies that affect a majority of the board. We can only make policies that affect minorities of the board. That's a good way to look at it, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, there we go. Um, and then one more thing. It's not an issue or related to policy. It's just that this, and in fact, it's not even a bad thing, that having members of the public on, it could be a good thing, having members of the public on committees could be a way to like leapfrog into future elections and ensure that there are candidates. Although that's not really an issue that facing the board right now. Who, who oh, knows? Yeah. That? Who knows that? No, it's that's. I mean, that's why public participation. That, among many other things, yeah. is why it's so important. Um, 
and that's why. Yeah, the thing I was unsure of there, what, what, there was the, the last part when you said, I'm not sure if that is an issue. Leadership development in denial is, is certainly an issue. <laughs> so I, I think that's great recommendation you had. Thanks so much for coming, Ben. Yeah. Thank you. Very um, much. I appreciate. can't make it credit, but I'm not going to be here. Don't worry about it. You probably have the best committee attendance yeah, out of anyone. I'd like to try to come if I can. Good job. We'll give you a gold star. <laughs> I don't like the wording I put here, but I put something. <laughs> That's just like, oh my god, it's so really bad. <laughs> the district. <laughs> the The opening? Or? Okay. <laughs> through a present, yeah, through, through a. I had just that, but actually, now, now that I fixed the other part, maybe that was the thing that was actually broken. Do you want to put an official press release? As opposed to an unofficial press release? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And an official press release would just be um, us directing the secretary or the president to mm -hmm. do it. That well, that's what I was going to say. Do we, we direct someone to do it? And I'm like, no, we'll leave that to the board. Well, that means oh, yeah. I, I was at Vandenberg that had the uh, uh, policy about how the secretary maintains the seal of the district. And so the mm -hmm. seal can be applied to the official press release before it is that's forwarded true. by career to. <laughs> Sent from my Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> Attach the seal. Attach the seal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dang, so, so what do we have above the thing. openings paragraph? Nothing? Oh. So committees may have their prerogative to declare an interest in having public membership on their committee. Is that not parallel? And we have committees may, and then it ends with committee. People may, at their prerogative, decide to carry a purse on their person. I don't think that's completely... I really like what you did there. there. But I like <laughs> what you did there. I was like, I really want to see how he ends this, but... Spencer, what do you think? Should that be... I, I think it's fine. Like, does it sound <laughs> weird? A little bit? Probably about, like, 15% weird. <laughs> but I mean, it worked. Like, it definitely worked, because I know what you're trying... I, I know why there's the specificity. The specificity. Committees may, at their prerogative, declare an interest in having public membership. Having public, yeah, but public membership, membership what, what then, that like, mean? just arbitrarily public like, membership you know, on, on the board. Their, yeah. on, like, you know. We want public membership. No, yeah. on their committee. Yeah. This will be recommended to the board of directors, which can choose to appoint members of the public to the committee by a process they determine. And in the future, though, well, we're actually we're working on determining that. So we actually we should yeah, probably yeah. already strike that as we yeah. Cool. That way we have a uniform one. The board will just solicit letters of interest. Interest. Okay. Can you change can choose to may choose? And can you merge the rest of the stuff close to this one so that we can compare and see where they intersect a little bit? No, it's not. Okay. Apparently, it's relative within. Okay. And can you read this? Yeah. Okay. Oh, take out the during any second sentence of second paragraph. It's just redundant. During any wait, hold. board meetings, that's supposed to be not board. Uh. But then the secretary, <laughs> during any board meetings during these two weeks, right? Oh, oh wait. Yeah, it, it, they, they, they are two different versions of during. One is like in the scope of the meeting, and the yeah, other yeah. is during the two weeks. But uh -huh. So let's so hold on. I'm uh, sorry to go back to this. What's the difference between announcing something on the agenda and uh, agendizing something? So the, the difference of the field to me was when you said agendized, I thought it was going to be like there's going to be a discussion item, which we will then have, and then we will like 
have somebody introduce it maybe with a board letter and then we will talk about it again um, whereas the announcement on the agenda mm -hmm. to me is more like in the IVRPD at the top mm -hmm. they've got that section of announcements okay and then it just has like stuff you might want to know okay. about by the way there's also a meeting of this committee and there's a meeting of this other district and there's an appointment that is currently open I will take that into account. So do we want to set some sort of timeline for soliciting letters of interest? Maybe oh, definitely. Yeah. So, so IVRPD has... When a position on a district committee becomes open, the board shall determine a length of term for the position and so the three applications shall be received for at least three weeks. The application deadline for the length of the term shall be included in all advertisements. How long was the county like 45 days, I think. 45? I thought it was 30. It's not a separate place. I'm okay with applications shall be received for at least three weeks. I think that's I, I And I love following a, the proceed, doing a parallel procedure to a trusted special district that we no, they use this policy and they haven't gotten in trouble for it. Oh, that's an interesting point. An interesting point that you favor or? Yeah, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. I guess we don't actually need this anymore. We just need to announce I'm going to temporarily put, no, uh, so, because we, we have the letters of, it, like what the, that is the, the letter of interest is the, the definition of an application down here. So we really need to say, specify something about how there's applications will be, that there will be applications. So, because so here we have that applications shall be received, but we, we just need to specify that there are receipt of the applications. I mean, actually, no, I guess IVRP doesn't really specify that there. Wait, I'm sorry, what are you saying? You're saying we need to specify that applications are going to be formed and go out? Other way around. That applications are going to be received. And they're that there be will be an application process. I mean, we have, we have, we have specified that what the definition of an application is, Yeah. but we haven't specified that which is also part of what this sentence was doing, which is why I, just, I temporarily put it here so we can stare uh -huh. at it with the context of everything. That specifies that there will be a three length, sorry, a three week application process. Or an actually no weeks and three, and the deadline. That there will be a deadline for applications. Uh -huh. uh, and that makes it clear that there are also existing applications. Mm -hmm. Rather than when a position on a district committee yeah. becomes open, should we make it when a district on a committee is, oh no, there was just a one word in there. Maybe just remove that. And that actually starts to fit into this paragraph better, which may choose to the appoint members to the public committee. The board shall determine a length of term for the position to be filled, and a deadly shoot. And even that's a little bit weird. Can you even say shall determine shall determine a deadline for the receipt of So through this, we've stricken any mention of a term like four members of a committee. Public members. From the public and will determine a deadline for the receipt. Determinate, determine of these applications. So again, we don't have any sort of um, term length for members of the public. Yeah, so the reason, okay, so do we, we I don't have I a term length for? For members of the public. Well, we didn't have a term length even for us. I thought we decided that that was just happening every January. Well, that kind of implies that it's a year and that it okay. can be reviewed. And so we, we don't, but that mechanism doesn't apply to here? I think it does, because it's talking about committee membership. 
Uh, wait, let's go back and look at what we approved. To, well, to look at it and see if it does apply. Because I don't remember what exactly the language was. So wait, what are we looking back at? At the, Have you at the clause, no, no, no. At what we just approved, the last policy, which oh. stated How's it that, I'm hey. Waving and saying hello, I know you guys are probably in the middle of something. Oh, don't public worry about meeting. it. Public meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. do, is it a public meeting? We're three yeah. and a half hours into a public meeting on policy committee for the community services district. Oh, really? Well, yeah. you should have at least somebody in audience. <laughs> well, yeah, we actually, we, actually, we only lot. just lost our last audience member about 10 minutes ago. You so. gotta have, or is that the right word? Audience? You're a member of the public. Pub member of the, the public. public. We're talking about members of the public right now, so. Perfect. That's great. And you have two if you count Lily. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what you want you to pull back up. The board shall appoint and publicly announce the members of the standing committees for the ensuring year no later than the board's first regular meeting in January. So, the board shall appoint and publicly announce the members of the standing committees. So, since kind of one of the processes that we went through is that the, or at least my understanding of it was that because the existence of committee necessitates that there are members of the board on that committee and that they are kind of the like the baseline members. And then it's up to committees to make recommendations to the board or to the board to act on its own to then ask members of the public, would you like to serve on said committee? I, I, I guess what I'm saying is that I think that because, I mean, I think there needs to be a separate sort of terming because we get into a situation where, say, uh, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but let's say at the next board meeting, one of the committees comes back and says, hey, if you'd like public members, and we say, great, we just recommended to you all these policies regarding public members, so now there's a framework to do it. So then that public member would be up for review in January. Or would they serve out full year? Because I was here's the other thing: is that the yeah. thing that's in the background of my mind here is that I think that there are a lot of situations in our operations and within other things that people in the public want to do but might not be willing to put the commitment in for. And I think that we would get a little more interest if the, there was a term that was defined and it was for a specific period of time. And are you looking for terms that are less than a year? Yeah. Okay. That, all right. That explains it. Because like every time I thought of term, I would be like for like a two year term, and then I was like, okay. I think it's better. I think that the more the more rotation people we can okay. get engaged with this district, the better it's going to be for everybody. Okay. Comments on the structuring? Certainly comments on the wording. If you're looking for wording, the second paragraph, top sentence, take out the four. Oh. Maybe at the end of the first paragraph, um, which may choose to appoint members of the public to the committee for a term length chosen by the board, maybe put after that, upon this decision, an opening will be declared, or an opening on the committee. <laughs> a committee position will be declared open. How about that? Okay, all right. And then <laughs> you can, and then you can preface the next one with "in the event of an opening, comma." 
Well, because I got that for the third paragraph. Really? How about following, really? following an opening? opening? Yeah, that's why I was trying to figure out. Okay, yeah, but, no, but, but in the event of an opening, it starts to yeah. make it like, like, what other things yeah. can cause an opening to no, occur? Follow, like, <laughs> following the declaration of an opening, or upon the declaration of an opening. Okay, all right, fine. Yeah, because that's not leaving out from the air. That's after it's been declared by the board. All right, cool. So, okay. Uh, Jeff, was there a set of draft minutes in your packet, in your pile? Um, Just yes. check. Okay, yes. cool. Yeah, I just need to run over to the clinic and uh, check in with everyone. Go right ahead. Okay. Okay. At any board meetings during these two weeks, maybe take out the second any. Just have it at any board meetings during these two weeks, openings will also be announced on the agenda. Take out the what else we also in the middle of paragraph three, I think. So in the second sentence, because also is used following that, and I think it's good for the last one. Should we, a a, should we put a clause in there um, that says um, in this paragraph um, that says the opening will be advert will can also be advertised through any other means determined by the board of directors. Can you specify where, or you just like um, like. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. That way, if we do a website, it's very clear, spelled out in our policy that. So we I think I've got multiple ulcers. What? Now I've got multiple ulcers. Yes, yeah, so I think we should take out the preceding one. <laughs> cool. Wait, was that what you were going to say? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Was that what you were going to say? That was what I was saying. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Are we getting somewhere near something we'll want to move? <clears throat> okay, I'm, I, I'm still. <clears throat> We've got a mechanism now where it says that when the committee does something and, dis and decides, uh, okay, the committee gives to the board of directors a recommendation. The board of correct directors then decides something and upon this decision, a committee position will be declared open. Upon the declaration of an opening, the board shall solicit applications. It just seems like this is a weird set of like multiple levels of event that occurs that like, I think that's consistent with other policies. Oh, yeah, I, I think I think it's okay. a good thing. All right, all right. I mean, it provides because here's the other thing is that <laughs> I mean, in I, there will come a time when someone's going to read this policy manual because they just started as I don't know they they just yeah. they started working for us 
a future iteration mm -hmm. of us where we have I'm policies to regarding what the hell personnel. We were doing when we made and there the, <laughs> the well, that too. Okay. <laughs> but no, there. I would hope that they would say, okay, here, there's a very clearly delineated template of how I should be doing things. All right. And I, I think it's good the way we have it. Okay. So I would move what's written on the screen. I know I have to say it. Yeah, um, one sec, I, one second. I'm going to grab. Thank you. No, no. I see what I'm doing wrong. All right. I'd like to move to recommend that the board of directors adopt the following policy entitled Committee Selection Policy. Committees may, at their prerogative, declare an interest in having public membership on their committee. This can be recommended to the Board of Directors, which may choose to appoint members of the public to the committee for a term length chosen by the Board. Upon this decision, a committee position will be declared open. Upon the declaration of an opening, the Board shall solicit applications from the public and will determine a deadline for the receipt of these applications. Applications shall be received for at least three weeks. Openings for district committees shall be posted in the window of the board meeting location for two weeks. At any board meetings during these two weeks, openings will be announced on the agenda. The opening will be advertised through an official press release. The opening will also be advertised through any other means as directed by the board of directors. The application deadline and the length of term shall be included in all advertising. Applications for district committees shall consist of a one-page maximum letter from the applicant that details why she slash he should be considered to be a member of the committee and, if directed by the board of directors, a completed FPPC form 700 bracket financial conflict of interest statement. And the application details shall be included in all advertising and posting. Second. Any input from members of the public? Seeing none, roll call vote. I actually have some amendments. I'd oh, like okay. <laughs> First amendment, um, to put numbers in front of the sections to be consistent with our others. Good one. Let's see if your second amendment is the same as mine. <laughs> Continue. I want to hear yours. You <laughs> My second amendment, this is like rather, t I'd be actually be pretty surprised, but um, <laughs> the, I think that following the, um, um, the phrase, a completed FPPC form 700 financial conflict of interest statement, or actually following the phrase form 700, it should say, or, uh, or it's equivalent. Because I mean, right, I would hope that they would continue to be called Form 700s for a long time, but who knows. Yeah. Do we want to add, or, oh, that's, that's edgy. This? <laughs> yeah. I am, <laughs> wait, why? I, I think there's going to be a lot of places in our policy manual when completed where we'll have Form 700. If Form 700 becomes obsolete, we'll be revamping the whole. Yeah, I, I actually think that even, I'm not finding it immediately right now, but I actually think that the website where if you work for the FPPC, you file these things, they like called it form700.fppc.ca.gov. Like they, like oh, it's they're, form they're, 700. They're, like invested. It's, <laughs> yeah. they're invested in this <laughs> title. Yeah. So I, I don't, it's not that's friendly with saying. the sex. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, back off, Spencer. But what I was going, so what is your second thing? I'm curious. Oh, do we want to add in the number five that says um, within two weeks of the close, within two weeks of the application deadline, the board of directors shall make an, make a, make an appointment to fill the opening, or shall appoint an applicant to fill the opening. So okay, so the to avoid the only the only thing that I would say here is that I don't want to tie the board's hands because of one of the things we talked about, which is that certain months provide for weird schedules and regular meetings. 
And if the board doesn't feel that it's necessary, well, I mean, I guess this could necessitate a special meeting. I guess what I'm saying is I don't want to force the board to have to call a special meeting to do this. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel like it should probably still happen. Yeah. Like, but if it's within two weeks, of, or well, yeah, then do we want to extend it? Because we'll never, like, we shouldn't ever be in a position where it wouldn't be three weeks, right? I don't think so. Well, so the, the, I guess the interesting question there is what happens if you only have one applicant provide an application and at least one member of the board is just apparently dead set on not having that person and manages to even skip subcommittee meetings to force that person to not be <laughs> on the committee uh, causing... Do we really have to parent Garland <laughs> this? Yeah, I know. I mean, like, you can't require someone to be at a committee meeting. No, 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 my, 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 my... I know, I know your official thing, though, yeah. There. My point is, what if Jay is the only person who applies and you just apparently really don't want Jay on your committee? <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, this is the board of directors, so yeah, that would be a lot of people having to skip the meeting. No, I don't mean the, no. I I mean the issue being that by putting this clause here, what it does is it forces the board of directors to appoint Jay in the way that the San Bernardino laws might have forced Lafco to appoint Jay to, uh, as opposed to going. All, let's all we just, know. Come on, can't we find anyone other than Jay? <laughs> we probably know the Santa Barbara laws say the same yeah. thing, and they just didn't follow their policy. I couldn't I, find the policy. I would like to think that the board will be following the policies that we make. So yeah. then, should it be a must majority of oh, the board like that. votes to extend? Votes to extend the application period? Or should it be application deadline? Yeah, because period would make it so that they could do the thing that we just talked about. And it's kind of implied that the application period is already closed. Yeah. For a specified amount of time, maybe. Right from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do we extend the application deadline indefinitely? Or we could say to... Application deadline or... We votes to extend vo or votes to defer the decision. No, because it's deferring. It, well, deferring this defers. decision means we don't get any new applicants and we're stuck yeah, with yeah. that. Okay. We could say move the application deadline to another date in the future. No? I like it. Can extend the application deadline this to. What did you want? Oh, I was saying just four. No, we can leave. We can leave it there. I was trying to avoid what we're trying to do. Oh, you you want to like remove this whole five? No, <laughs> no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me anxiety like that. <laughs> Where'd it go? Hey, what are we doing? I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> we're we're focused on that last line there. Yeah. Um, so to me, like extending something for a specified amount of time felt weirder than just moving the deadline to another point in time. Okay, that's fine. But to move the pace of deadline to another date in the future. Just, just to specify that you can't just decide to move it to the past. Although that would, if you, if you're, yeah, I don't think that could happen. <laughs> we could probably move that. And then we should have I'll some, try. We should finish this <laughs> I'll off. I'll stress test these policies. I think we should finish this one off with something like uh, upon. Thank you for beating the. Sorry. Or, well, here, before you keep talking, <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is okay, when this new date arrives, the procedure will continue as if, um, like, then th at that time. I can't be doing this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you told me not to do this. I, yeah. I got confused. Okay. Uh, no, I'm just trying to say, like, when the new date arrives, okay, commence number five again. Within two weeks of this new deadline, okay. the board of directors shall appoint. When this new date arrives, the, the, board the post application deadline process will recommence. I like that. Okay, it actually is relevant. So are we saying that the 
just the post application deadline part recommences or are we saying that the noticing should happen again? That should, yeah, yeah, that would need to or else we wouldn't get more applicants. So in a, in a way, this is actually equivalent to simply Unless, being unless like, a majority we're not satisfied with who applied, we want to do it start again. The whole thing we want to do over. over. Yeah, like in a way, it's like saying that unless a majority so of the shamed. board votes to restart the process in the hope. Actually, that, that's kind of weird, but restart the process um, with a new deadline to obtain more applications. Consistent with the procedures described above. Consistent with the protocol or with the pol the policy. The policy described above. Or policy described herein. Described. It's, it's the same for policy. Here I spelled out. I don't. Move the I and the E. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And would they be voting to restart the process or to vote down the, the nominee? They're not voting down anything. They're, they're just voting to restart the process. They're not voting down And does that mean that anything. the person who's applied has to reapply? Because we could just do vote to extend the process with a new deadline. I feel like but extending it doesn't restart the noticing to move, requirements. To move yeah, because I feel like, here's the thing. what. What is the process worth at all if the board can just say, eh, we didn't really like who applied, we're going to have a do-over. So they'd have I to vote like, him down. I feel like I him would. Yeah, and so, and I don't really want that to happen. So one thing that has happened, from, so I'm, I was on the, what do they call it? It was Dean Selection Search Committee for the College of Creative Studies back in like 2006. So we needed a new mm -hmm. dean. And they had these like multiple tiers of application process. And so they started off and it was just anyone within UCSB wanted to apply, apply. And we had the options to either choose one of them or we don't like them, we want find a bigger applicant pool. And then they would like go and we'll try the whole UC system. And then we'll try, we'll do a nationwide search of all universities. Fine, we'll just try a business member. Like maybe there's just somebody who has like an MBA who's willing to run our, run our college temporarily. Um, and uh, like this, this, this idea that you get a bunch of applications and you're like, mm, you know, based upon these applications, we would rather find more applicants or maybe we don't even really need this position. Like, I, I feel like that's something that happens and that well, people are vaguely okay with. I mean, like, I, I, I ended up thinking it was really humorous uh, for various policy related reasons what LAFCO did with my application, but I'm not like, I, mean, I clearly continued to attend LAFCO meetings and yeah. continued to work with, like, I, I thought it was just fun. No, it, <laughs> yeah. so, and, I, and I like actually Shane, they found Shane to do it and I was like, I like Shane, so. Shane's a good guy, yeah. yeah. Oh wait, for other reasons, I wish you got that appointment. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reasons not within the <laughs> subject jurisdiction matter of our community that he would have found something else. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, so number five, within two weeks of the application deadline, the board of directors shall appoint an applicant to fill the opening unless a majority of the board votes to restart the process with a new deadline to obtain more applications consistent with the policy described herein. Existing applications will be considered automatically as part of the new process. Should be existing applicants. Ah, uh, that sounds better. I think I like it. Okay, so we willing to read that out loud? I mean, I, I still I still feel a little weird about the last part, but I mean, the last part being that the existing applicants are considered automatically. The, the whole last part, number five. The the idea the that idea. that we restart the process. Just because we, I mean, maybe if we specified, I mean, because I understand if we get one applicant and we're like, well, we obviously didn't do a good enough job yeah. getting this out there in the community. And it's implied that we would know that if we got zero applicants. So there needs to be a mechanism to restart the process. But do we put a number of applicants in there that is like our 
minimum number of applicants? I don't know. No, I because I, I think if we were really happy with this one applicant that we got, like, think about the county's appointment they just had. They were really happy with Bob Geis, and he was the only one who applied. Um, it, true. If we only get one applicant, but we're really happy with that person, we shouldn't have to vote to extend it. All right. But then that also begs the question, if you're unhappy with the person who got their paperwork in time, who followed the procedures, then you should, should you just vote them down and say, I'm sorry? And then the process, like, if someone has, if someone's dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's in the application process, is it fair for you to restart the process for more people to jump in line now when there's someone who's waited in line? Would it be better to say? Somebody made that argument on the LAFCO board, by the way, about <laughs> about my application. Well, what ended up happening uh, was they, they then, when they brought in more people, I think it was, I think there were two people who ended up applying, not just Shane, so maybe there might have been somebody else, but it might have just been just Shane. Then they went and did the interview process where they interviewed me and they interviewed Shane, and then they, once they felt like they, and uh, as opposed to just saying, like, we don't want Jay, they were like, okay, we'll, we'll just, we'll extend the pool and then compare. Uh, it's possible that there's also been like an emotional component to it that as somebody on the receiving end of that experience, I felt okay with the idea that they extended the pool and then continued to consider me. I might have maybe been a little bit more unhappy had they just been like, well, we just don't like you. Yeah, we're <laughs> they didn't down. actually say that at any point. They were just like, yeah. man, we don't have a wide enough pool. Let's bring in some more people and then do the full process. <laughs> um, okay, so then maybe it's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, do we want to like recommend this and we can sit on it a bit? Okay. Yeah, let's let's sit on it. I Wait. mean, I so like I I could definitely see this coming before the board and someone being like, "What's the deal with this?" and us having to explain it. So we should definitely ruminate on it. Um, I, I I think we should recommend something. But the experience we had last time is is that we didn't even read any of these. We simply clumped them all together and just because we have the three most critical members. Did <laughs> 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 I say that out loud? Did you like, well, comment on that? I, I, I thought as a committee you would actually you would deliberate rather than ruminate. But maybe I'm putting too fine a point on it. Well, no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I got it wrong. Go ahead. Nice that you guys are working so hard. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so you much for you're coming. You're taking it all very seriously, and that's a good thing. So yeah. keep at it. Just light, light on. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. So are we doing this? We're not doing this. We are doing this now. I I've moved to amend the motion okay. to include section five. Within two weeks of the application deadline, the board of directors shall appoint an applicant to fill the opening unless a majority of the board votes to restart the process with a new deadline to obtain more applications, consistent with the policy described herein. Existing applicants will be considered automatically as part of the new process. So that's friendly with the second. Is it friendly with the first? Friendly with the first. Okay. Okay. Any more board discussion? I think I've had one more thing. Okay. Before we jumped in that rabbit <laughs> hole. Before we go to public comment. <laughs> <laughs> Since in section two it says upon the de declaration of an opening, section three enters openings for district committee. Should we still be assuming that we're talking about like a single opening? Wait or a maybe second. Not. What I'm if not what if sure. the committee? Okay, before we were we were being careful about this, and then at some point we stopped. I guess who was uh, before we had it so that the the committee could request multiple people, and so then it was choose to appoint members of the public. But then upon this decision, only a position is declared open. 
a committee position or positions. Yeah, I think that's how you do it. Really? I think so. <laughs> that's how a computer programmer would do it, but that's <laughs> not how a normal person would do it. you get rid of that space next to the A. All right, so that's the reason why the, the programmer in me is like, well, see, it's what it is. It's a, you can either add or remove the A and the space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's really good. This kind of, the problem with this formatting is it just starts to feel to me like this is like a sub A. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, well, but they're, it's fully enclosed instead of just one of them. Okay, all right, yeah, that's the format of them. Any committee decoration of... So here's a question now. Now that, we, now that we've got multiple openings, but then upon the declaration of an opening, um, let's say that we want two people. Does that mean that we now have two openings? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do people apply to the two openings separately? Probably not. Hopefully if, not. No. It, but so now what we've done is we've said that upon this decision, various committee positions are declared open. Upon the declaration of an opening, an event which occurs twice, yeah. um, the board shall solicit applications to the public to determine the deadline for the receipt of those applications. Because there are two positions that are open. This feels even grammatically more horrible to me, but on the declaration of openings. <laughs> I think that carries out the intent better. But yeah. it looks <laughs> declaration of openings. The board shall solicit that. Okay. Well, that might actually be good. Then we have to change um, in three, fourth line, the opening to the openings. And then up one line, same thing. Oh, did the you open. like what I did there or not? Any, any openings? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I do actually. And then what? The opening one line above to any openings. Another option here we just said openings. We could just say like, Openings will be advertised. Openings will also be yeah, advertised. That works. And that's how you started that yeah. section. Anyway. Openings. Openings, 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 openings. Okay. Cool. Right. Um, so, do we want to like. Describe amend it this again? part, or should we rescind and reread it all through? I can read it really fast. You should amend. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I mean, feel we, like it's unnecessary to. Well, I feel like we just made so many changes on it that it's. All right, I can reread it. I'll, I'll rescind my motion, Mr. Okay. Chair. Um, if you want to scroll up, I'm ready to make another motion. Um, oh, and one more thing. It should be policy titled, right? Not policy entitled. Well, before we just had policy colon, I thought. Oh, and that's how I Yeah, sorry, it. I was trying, yeah. well, because. But one more thing, because I noticed you wrote entitled in some I that might have actually. he said entitled, and yeah, so I added I think that was actually, remember when we were reviewing the minutes the other day, and I was like, damn, I had a correction in my mind that I couldn't have. Oh, that was the one. Entitled, yeah, because I think entitled doesn't refer to titling something, right? Or does it? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't I can see that. I can see it because like, it was like an, an entitlement. I can see is, it. Is, is I, I'm, I'm willing to believe that you're right about that. But I know I've heard it in other contexts. But if we leave that out of here, I think okay. we're good. Okay. All right. okay. All right. I move to recommend that the board of directors adopt the following policy. Committee selection policy. One, committees may, at their prerogative, declare an interest in having public membership on their committee. This can be recommended to the Board of Directors, which may choose to appoint members of the public to the committee for a term length chosen by the Board. 
upon this decision, a committee position bracket positions will be declared open. Two, upon the declaration of openings, the board shall solicit applications from the public and will determine a deadline for the receipt of these applications. Applications shall be received for at least three weeks. Three, openings for district committees shall be posted in the window of the board meeting location for two weeks. At any board meetings during these two weeks, openings will be announced on the agenda. Openings will be advertised through an official press release. Openings will also be advertised through any other means as directed by the Board of Directors. The application deadline and the length of term shall be included in all advertising. Four, applications for district committees shall consist of a one-page maximum letter from the applicant that details why she slash he should be considered to be a member of the committee and, if directed by the Board of Directors, a completed FPPC Form 700, colon, or not colon, uh, financial conflict of interest statement. The application details shall be included in all advertising and posting. Five, within two weeks of the application deadline, the Board of Directors shall appoint an applicant to fill the opening unless a majority of the Board votes to restart the process with a new deadline to obtain more applications consistent with the policy described herein. Existing applicants will be considered automatically as part of the new process. Second, and I move to add to the verbal motion parentheses around financial conflict of interest statement in section four. Friendly. Okay, and I move to add, to amend the motion to add at least before two weeks in the second line of section three to be consistent with um, the rest of the these at least during these no no least? that was not the one I was no. looking at the first one and then maybe change at any board meeting during this period does that does that friendly, make sense friendly uh, is it friendly with the second if we take if we strike she slash he and just put they for very friendly are we good? Yes. Any Bush members of the public? Seeing none. Roll call vote. Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. Jay? Aye. Motion passes 3 0. 7 6. So Spencer first. Okay. Cool. Do we want to continue with any other things? Any other yes. policies? All right. Which I'd like to recommend <coughs> amending a policy. Ooh, okay. Let me find it. And this hopefully will make sense to you guys. But if it doesn't, then I'd actually be, I'd actually be happy if it doesn't. Because then maybe we don't have to do anything with it. Okay. <laughs> but let me um, Do you speak so, of? purpose of board policy. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's the second one. It's the um, adoption amendment of policies. So we're looking at like the pipeline. Got it. Okay. Um, consideration by the board of directors to adopt a new policy or to amend an existing policy may be initiated by any director. The proposed adoption or amendment shall be initiated by a director submitting a written draft of the proposed new or amended policy to be included with all necessary attachments as an agenda item of the next appropriate meeting of the board of directors. So obviously, like the committee chairperson or any of us were members of the board, so we can submit a new policy or amend an existing policy, but sh which he, should we maybe put mention of the policy committee initiating that? Because that's like what we're doing <laughs> here. <laughs> Do you guys like that? Maybe um, consideration by the board of directors to adopt a new policy or to amend an existing <laughs> policy um. may be initiated by any director or the policy committee. <laughs> the proposed option or amendment shall be initiated by a director or the policy committee <laughs> submitting a written draft of the proposed new or amended policy to be included with all necessary attachments 
as an agenda item of the next appropriate. Yeah, I think that's just what we have to do. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I move to amend the policy entitled adoption. Titled. Resume my motion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can check this out, but. I don't know. I've definitely heard it before. So if if I'm wrong, then I'm not the only person well, who's wrong. That's I'm all saying, I'll say. I just ser I just searched entitled. It says adjective, and the only definition that comes up is believing oneself to be inherently deserving of privileges or special treatment. Now I'm going to just search titles. Special snowflakes. Title <laughs> is. Or well, to give a name. Okay. But thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should also then have uh, have a policy that uh, any any motion must use the verb move, not the verb motion. <laughs> well, Art gave us good advice <laughs> yeah. on that. Yeah. Thanks, Art. <laughs> All right. I move to recommend that the board of directors amend the following policy: adoption slash amendment of policies to include the phrase or the policy committee following the first sentence of section one to read one consideration by the board of directors to adopt a new policy or to amend an existing policy may be initiated by any director comma or the policy committee I uh, I think this is really cool. I have a different way of thinking about too. Oh, we, oh wait, did you you had more? Hopefully you have more. There, wait, hold on. <laughs> here's, here's what I think we may be able. To where do. where wait, where was I supposed to have more? Wasn't there? Yeah, there was a second sentence. Yeah, there was a second sentence. But ahead oh, what? <laughs> but what may make more sense is like. Move wait, where's the second? The board sentence? of directors amend the policy title adoption amendment of policies to read as or section one, adoption, amendment of policies to read as follows, and then just read it out as new, and that way we don't have to provide That's a fine. Can, can you direct me, because apparently <laughs> I am just a confused child who does not know where the second, where the second amendment So there were two, there was consideration by the board of directors to adopt a new policy or to amend an existing policy may be initiated by any director or the policy committee. And then the proposed adoption or amendment shall be initiated by a director or the policy oh. committee submitting a written draft of proposing your amendment policy. Yeah. All right, all right. I don't have a pen, but I'm just gonna go for it. So you rescind your motion? I rescind my motion. Okay. And maybe if you wanna say like comma, just to make it clear, or is that necessary? The comma in the first part? Or just, right just how you I speak okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I move to recommend that the board of directors adopt the following policy: adoption slash amendment of policies. So, well, actually, I received my okay, motion. Wait, I, I, I received my motion. Yeah. I, I, wait, I if you have language, it. this could be so easy. Like, I don't want you, you to adopt a new one. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> the oh board my policies amend, <laughs> no, modify. I. Rip, 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 rip. I have a motion. No, because we I, we have it. I have a motion, you too. All right, let's do it, let's do it. Motion. Okay. Wait, I did rescind my motion. Okay, then there's no motion on this table. Here's my point. It shouldn't be modified because we have a policy about adopting and amending policy. So it should be amend. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it should be okay. section one of the policy titled adoption slash amendment of policy. Okay. I move to recommend that the board of directors amend section one of the policy titled adoption slash amendment of policies to read Consideration by the Board of Directors to adopt a new policy or to amend an existing policy may be initiated by any director or the policy committee. The proposed adoption or amendment shall be initiated by a director or the policy committee submitting a written draft of the proposed new or amended policy to be included, comma, with all necessary attachments as an agenda item of the next appropriate meeting of the Board of Directors. At that time, the Board of Directors may take action on the proposed policy or amendment, or they may vote to refer the proposal to the policy committee for consideration and recommendation. Second. And what? I would hope that the board does not refer this amendment back to the policy <laughs> committee. <laughs> Wait, but why did you say comma once and ignore all the, like... Okay, I don't know. Move to remove any 
record of me saying comma. Yes. Friendly. So, okay. So, right. Do you, do you want do you want a comma there or not? Okay. There should be a comma there. But yeah, and, and pretend like and I didn't was, say it. Well, that was well, reflected. Really, though? Why, why should there be a comma there? <laughs> to amend an existing policy may be initiated by any director or the policy committee. Okay, but I, wait, 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 wait. we're talking about, we're talking about a different, we're talking about a different, yeah, in the second in iteration. One. Shall be initiated by a director or a policy committee. Uh, I believe I said. Or, or, no, that's the thing, or, or the. <laughs> Policy. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's there's, policy. There's nothing that you need to do on your end. Okay. Okay. Just like pretend like I didn't say comma. Yeah, but I was wondering. Was yeah. Like, okay. I think and we did wanted that. a comma there somewhere. Did you want a comma? Yes, somewhere? but that's I'm fine with where we're I at. said I okay. said comma. Yeah, I know you said comma, and we're moving. There was a comma. Was there the... supposed to be a comma somewhere? No. no. It's good. All no. right. We're chilling. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything else I was supposed to think here about? I don't think so. No. Okay. I still feel like I'm forgetting something. Am I forgetting anything? Do you think we're just, we're, just, we're just done? I think this is good. Oh, I remember what it was. Yeah, we can do it in a second. Okay. So, uh, roll call vote, Ethan. Members of the public. Yeah, no, they're not there. Well, we have to ask. Walked out the door. You right have to like, ask, though. I do? Yeah. Okay, all right. I, I was just joking this whole time when I do it. I was like, no, no. at some point, this joke's going to get tired. And I've, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any members we of the public like to, like to comment on this motion? No? no? Okay. Roll call vote, Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. Jay? Aye. Motion, motion passes 3 0 7 15 p.m. Okay. So, question then is. It was related to the motion. It doesn't really take a matter. Uh, technically, since there's no process by which. I guess policy committee can actually do this normally. Should one of us also submit this to Spencer? That's fine. You as chairperson. Okay. Submit this. This one to Spencer, <laughs> so that we can get. Well, all of you, you should actually. You well, should, you should be doing that for all the policies. No, you should be submitting everything Do because okay. all of this is subject to the policies we passed, which did not include a mechanism for this okay. committee. Okay. So last, so yeah, so last meeting, <laughs> we were recommending policies that hadn't passed yet, but this meeting, there are policies in place that we must abide by. Okay. Yeah, and we. We need to make sure that we don't ever like handcuff ourselves that we can't we can't let us <laughs> oh say out of it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Do we have to like the policy sue, committee tie their own hands? <laughs> sue on our own behalf. Congratulations, to policy break committee. In. You played yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. Okay. All right. So. Are there any other policies that people would like to consider? <coughs> One thing I would assume that mine? since the next board meeting isn't. Till the fourth of April, right? That is correct. We're probably going to meet before then, right? Spencer's gone. Oh, I will be gone from this Sunday to the next, the following Monday. Oh. Not the Monday that follows that Sunday, but the one right. after that. And isn't that April? That would be April, th either third or fourth. I can't remember. Well, we have a meeting on the fourth, third, third. third. I'll be back in time for the meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is probably our last meeting until then. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we? I mean, think we need I'm. To do? Yeah. After thinking about that, I'm willing to keep going for a little while, um, just so that we can. Well, zoom well on sure. what though? Like, do we have specific things? I don't have anything else. I would have. I would have made it as. Well, I, I have. We can consider some of the things that I have in my handout. That apply to Is the same handout from last board. Time? Mm -hmm. oh. It's a different handout. You should have a copy yeah, of it. Like then I just didn't even. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So let's. I think the first one is the most obvious. Um, this is um, setting just, I think it's some boilerplate stuff for board meetings. Um, I can read them out. Um, I want to just make sure real quick by doing a review of what we've already adopted that we're not doubling over anything. I don't think we are, though. Um, and Jonathan, during public comment, brought up something important, which is that um, special meetings, there should be a protocol for calling 
special meetings. Um, this is something that we all know we ran into when we tried to call the very first meeting where there was no defined process for us to call that meeting because and so we basically just did a we did what we could in compliance with the law over an email vote um, I yeah I, I think we should have we should have policies for calling special meetings um, that define how that can be done. Um, what, what does everyone else think? I want to look through this and make sure that we're not doubling up on anything real quickly. So we're looking at title board meetings, A, B, C, and D? Yes. I mean, have you seen, I'm sure you've seen the board meetings and the sample policy <coughs> handbook, right? How it's this very elaborate policy. Um, so you're like, <coughs> I, I think we should work on a more detailed board meeting policy. Okay, yeah, and well, maybe I should specify this is one piece of what the policy could be, but I think there are like some necessary pieces that we should just have in place. I mean, if you feel that we should just leave it off till another time when we can do something more comprehensive all at once? We may want to, because A <coughs> is, so part A is provided by board motion, part B is provided by the law. Um, I think part C, is that given to me by rules of order that we've adopted? Or given to the, the president? Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. I just, I think we should work on a, a bigger thing. And perhaps what we can do here is delegate some of this out to work. Because I feel like all of this um, still has a good amount to, to add to. OK. Um. So I do think it would be good to consider some sort of a code of ethics going forward, um, just because I know there was definitely some controversy in the last meeting that kind of spilled over outside the meeting. And I think there should be some sort of policy in place for what the board deems as an acceptable practice, just so everyone is on the same page. Um, so that we don't get into the back and forth. What do you all think? I think that we shouldn't call it code of ethics because I, when I hear ethics related to special district, I think of all the ethics laws and all of this is very different than that. Okay, so yeah, I mean, let's, let's change it to say something other than ethics um, because I, thinking about it, I, I agree with you. I will say this is, this is what it's entitled in IVRPD's policy Titled. manual. Titled in IVRPD's policy manual, but we can call it. Oh, something. it is called that? Mm -hmm. So, one of my positions was so drastically misrepresented that I would consider myself to be like bothered by it, except I'm not. I mean, like, I've, I, I, I could see other people even thinking that I would be bothered by it. I mean, I. I guess I, I looked at what ended up happening from the, just isolating the parts where I would feel that my positions were, mis, were misconstrued in what ended up happening as, oh, that director has their opinion as far as how things are going, and if that's what they wanted to tell somebody about it, they are an elected representative of people, actually no. Yeah, that's awkward. They are, <laughs> they are a representative of people. Uh, and that it is, uh, like, it's fine. Um, I, there seems to be something weird to me about trying to make statements that, like, oh, 
remember which one was it that I was just reading through here. It was uh, that like directors should commit themselves to emphasizing the positive and speaking respectfully of their board colleagues. Like, well, how do we really? This is like very subjective in terms of well, what is a positive comment? What is a um, we are going to disagree with each other, and when we disagree with each other, sometimes it's going to be because we think that the other person did something wrong, and we should, I think, be able to say that. Uh, much like we did not want to limit the members of the public from standing before us and saying that people did something that was wrong. Right, and it's just like, so there's the code of ethics, but also in IVRP's policy manual mm -hmm. for the policy on members of the board of directors, um, starting on 78, one of them is, um, Directors shall at all times conduct themselves with courtesy to each other, to staff, and to members of the audience present at board meetings. I think yeah. that's a much yeah, and that and that I mean, as an example, I mean, I don't feel like I, I better, based on what Spencer was just saying as like the reason for having this. I don't feel like there was any discourteous discourteous behavior that occurred during that scenario. Do you disagree? During this scenario that occurred at the meeting or after the meeting? After the meeting. Okay. I, think that's what I, you're do, I, I do disagree. I think that, and I'm not going to lay blame on anyone, but I don't, I don't like the way that that situation was handled. And I, I think that specifically that things that happen in the boardroom spilling out into the meetings is something that should be avoided. And I think I don't think we that can when when well that, what though. what this is why I I brought this is because this is something that is largely based off of and probably a little bit more lenient I would even say than IBRPD's policy regarding this, um, and it's not in this handout but it is in because I don't think this is the full policy manual actually I know it's not the full policy manual but in IBRPD's full policy manual they do have something called code of ethics and I regret that I don't have the exact number in front of me. So oh, it's one on page thing, 76. So, so one, one thing I would like to take a step back and make a comment on is, is that if you'd like to poke me about anything, I just want to open it up and say, like, I'm okay talking about any behavior you think that I did horribly. We can just do it in public and as far as record and everything, and that may make this conversation. And I'm, and I'm not even looking to yeah. talk about what happened in the past, what I'm looking to Yeah, no, but, the, but I, I think it's, okay, but, and the, the other thing I, I, I wanted to really say about that is that, one second here to, um, no, not that one. And listen, I really don't want to parse through a news article. I'm not. No, I'm not bringing up a news article. No, I'm okay. Not. Just making sure. Yeah, that was me talking to. That was me. That's right. It was me. Two people. So it had to have been. Oh, okay. I know why it's not showing up here. All right. So the, I I made a comment to somebody um, with relation to that article that that article is extremely overly written to be contentious. The comment that was provided on that article was, this is local politics, not House of Cards. Um, if you had, I, I do not, when I read that, I, because I know what I said to the reporter and how I got represented, I look at that article and I think, well, what, what the other person must have said to the reporter, I'm assuming is a drastic misrepresentation. Um, so, like, there's a couple things where it just seemed like a factual misrepresentation of something, and I might, I could see myself having been bothered by it, but, like, I don't take anything that was in there, even though I think that there were some comments in there that were written by the reporter to be weirdly personal. I'm taking that to be something that the reporter did in that article. Uh, and that's also why, like, I, 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 I started this with the, if there's anything that you think that I did during the course of this, that I would almost have to, like, please just kind of say it, because I did not... What I okay, described well, so to the reporter was just what I considered to be a thought process behind what happened mm -hmm. because they asked me a bunch of questions about why do you think that this occurred and things like that. Mm -hmm. I was just providing and then they, I was shocked at that article. I mean, I really was like, I mean, I was, I was expecting a very different article to come out of that interview, and when it turned into uh, this director versus yeah. this director, I was like, whoa, yeah. that was not what I was expecting. Yeah, so, I mean, as, as someone, and again, I don't want to get too far yeah. out of the policy yeah, recommendation, yeah, but, I, like, as, someone, as someone who's things. been quoted in news articles before, has formerly been a member of the press, this is not the first time that I've seen something like that happen. And I empathize with your situation in many ways. I think that the one, the one thing that I would say that 
would, if we instituted, say, this policy that I have brought before us that, or recommended and then the board instituted, let's say in another iteration of the board this was already in place, the policy that I feel would, that, okay, hold on, let me find it exactly. So, uh, viewpoint F, um, or not viewpoint F, uh, subpoint F. Differing viewpoints are healthy in the decision making process, and directors may disagree with one another. Once the board of directors takes action, directors should commit to supporting said action and refrain from taking actions to yeah. undermine or create barriers. Barriers the implementation of said action. Okay, that I wrote that incorrectly at the very end. Yeah, but I, I see where. You're, so I, I, just, I, I hate dancing, that beating around the bush so much. Like I mean, I just, I just want to say that like I'm imagining that something like that was written because somebody is concerned that I will try to undermine the AB seven twenty two letter that is going to be sent. That is the only scenario that I can come up with relating to that sentence. Um, I. This, I know this that was written because I copied and pasted it out of IVRPD. Okay. No, but there's but there's a difference between board. just copying and pasting something and why you bring it here, right? I mean, like there's reasons why I brought, I brought it here because the there's a that conflict I brought here. and the conflict did involve you and it involved another board member. And when you mean I, the whole item, or do you mean that section? I the, can't because I can't come up with, I can't come up with a scenario whereby that whereby F applies to the issue that occurred uh, in that in the in the article that was in the Daily Nexus. You, Sorry, the you, line. you you can or you can't. I can't come up with a scenario. I mean, like, I'm, I, okay. I want to explicitly state that um, in the article, George Thurlow is quoted as stating that I am adamantly opposed to the internship committee, but clearly that is not the case. So I I Listen, can't come I'm up not going to get I'm not I'm I'm not going to get into litigating a disagreement. Well, no, but I, I just, I, this kind of comes down to board letters and backgrounds, though. Like, there's a reason why we put things in these things. So, like, there's a reason why I put item number two on, the, on this item. And I, I, so you asked for, what it was for my background? Was. Yeah, and so I, and, and, and because I think it changes why we're, why we're doing things. Like, if we essentially are saying that we want to add policies because something happened that we didn't like to have happen. Mm -hmm then I think that that is related to the thing. And again, it is not related to the decisions behind the thing, uh -huh. but it is related to the actual actions. It's certainly related. It's also certainly not the entire thing because mm -hmm. long after people forget about incident, this is the policy. And <laughs> expressly, we are the policy committee. And these policies, until amended at a further date by the board, mm -hmm. if ever, will be the 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 ordinances of our district by which the board is supposed to conduct itself. So after having seen that scenario, I went and was reading through IVRP's policy manual, and this is one of the things I found. And I thought that it would be a good idea to have some sort of standards of mutual respect, um, mutual um, commitment to listening and being productive as a part of the decision-making process and there was an incident that occurred that I will admit prompted me to bring this to the committee irrespective of what prompted me to bring it to the committee though I think that we should consider something like this because there should be some sort of a standard for respect and how we treat one another but to the the reason why then I keep coming back to that is that we then have to actually define when you say, for example, that you would want to have policies that form respect, what does respect mean? And there are things that you could then provide that say, well, this is an example of non-respect and this is an example of respect. And I, I think it's relevant to discuss that. Um, I, the, I, I also, and then that's why, like, I, that's why like, I bring up, is it the AB 722 issue? Um, because I will remind, before this is not related to our district, um, I mean, it's related to our district, it's not related to our, any of our processes. Um, LAFCO made a decision that they were going to oppose the construction of this district. And then Doreen Farr went and actually announced herself as a member of LAFCO dissenting opinion and sa in Sacramento on that issue. And... 
Lafko got a little bit angry at her, but mostly because I think she actually tried to submit an expense report for that. Uh, <laughs> which was that is, wait, that's so, actually not legal. <laughs> there was a big argument about it. That's actually uh, kind of you have to in, be my, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. That's humorous. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I think that if if we're looking to add to this a, a pro, I think that there should be a proper way to express dissent. I think. Yeah, and, and, so, and so I wasn't. And so I, I haven't, like, like in the case of the AB722 thing, I haven't even looked into what's possible or what's allowed, and I've actually been kind of assuming that maybe I can't do anything, and I'm not certain if I would do anything. Like, it's, I, I don't, yeah, but, 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 but I, 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 I find it, I, I, like, when I read that, I was like, oh, is this, this, is, this is a way of, 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 of silencing me on that issue, and that's why I wanted to, like, talk about it or like if we and honestly if there was just a mechanism by which I could throw a dissent into something I would probably be totally satisfied and never care again. <laughs> um, well but, I, I'm against yeah. I think at least at this point putting in anything that that could even though this doesn't silence dissent because all of this is just recommendations it's always it should commit. Yeah, yeah um, and I was sure to make sure that it was yeah. like that. But like even yeah I mean with a democracy, a majority rule, minority right. I think it is important to always have the equal uh, opportunity for voicing opinion. It is important. I think this is an important policy that we should all consider and come back with our ideas. That's fine with me. I just want to make sure that we do something and that cool. we have something in this ballpark. In this yeah. ballpark meaning some sort of a code of behavior regarding mutual respect. Yeah, and I mean, if if any of this was brought on because of like the behavior of the other night, um, the directors were out of order, I didn't call them out of order, and no point of order was raised by a board member. So there were a lot of people who were in the wrong as far as procedures that could have prevented it from going where it did. It sounded like the issue was something that occurred after the meeting. Now, if there's other things no, that occurred a, during well, the meeting. But, but this policy yeah. discusses things. At the, no matter what, I think we should bring this back. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I am very curious. I mean, because again, I just, I like being frank, straight shooter on this sort of stuff. You've got the recusal and abstention clause. Mm -hmm. So I only remember a small handful of abstentions. Now the one that the one that maybe is weirdly out of frame is why did Jay abstain from the decision on the internship committee? Mm -hmm. This um, is why I put this on. <clears throat> yeah. So the reason why George Thurlow keeps abstaining, I claim is due to a financial conflict of interest that he beats around and that sometimes is willing to claim to and sometimes is not. Um, he. The reason why I abstained was because I felt that we had not actually adequately discussed the item. I had seriously typed up pages of items to talk about on all of the parts of the MOU. And I felt that because we had gone into motion and, was, uh, and were unable to actually, like, I was, I was getting massive opposition bringing anything up. I felt that it was completely completely inappropriate that we were, we'd been in that motion and that we were voting on this thing without discussing all these things. I thought that the concept of us voting on a memorandum of understanding when we had not been able to get any clarification from the negotiations on the other side, there had been no introduction of the MOU, was inappropriate. Um, and I, but at the same time, I'm not against, and so I didn't want to vote no because I wanted to actually, and so what I ended up doing is abstaining. I felt that that was my like most reasonable course of action to not vote no, but to also indicate that I felt that the vote itself was not something that should occur. And then there was a second issue, which is that my reading of section 1090 states that if I believe that there is another person on the board who has a financial conflict of interest related to an issue, and I vote to related to that issue, that actually I am complicit in their conflict of interest. And I was did under you the vote belief at all? that I did, so I abstained. I was under the impression that I mean, I, I we did we didn't even do a it wasn't a roll call vote. I mean, we, we, it was a roll call. It was vote. a roll call vote, um, but 
and maybe you put George Thoreau before me, but I was I was concerned about the idea that if I, because yeah, that's a good point, whether George abstains or not, I believe that there's another board member who has a conflict of interest related to that issue. And so I actually then had on my to-do list in order to go obtain legal counsel in order to determine whether or not I even can ever vote on anything related to the university and whether or not we have a serious issue having George Thurlow on the board in that capacity. Um, other people I've talked to have indicated that George should have recused himself from the meeting entirely. And I think we're yeah. out of we're, we're yeah. really getting on that. Yeah. Here. So yeah. I, the uh, and so I that is that was what happened with my abstention. Um, I I think that I mean like I I am somewhat therefore. What's the word I'm looking for here? Like. I feel like there's a lot of assumption that goes that 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 has gone into some of these things, and uh, without with to bring it as board decision, like to bring it as like policy committee decision, as opposed to I mean like like the one that I brought on, which was just I didn't like the fact that people were doing so moved and not talking about things. I was I mean I, I was willing to point at those things. I was willing to actually poke at them, and I'm not. I wasn't doing it because of reasons behind them. I was like trying to change something that was occurring during the meeting. I feel like some of this is actually, you're trying to change the way other members are voting. You're trying to change well, the mechanism. Well, this is right out of IVRP. No, policy. this is, this is right out of IVRP. Yeah. It's right out of I don't, so I don't care that IVRPD is doing something, because right. in some cases, IVRPD is doing something that's wrong. I think it's interesting, like as it was pointed out earlier, I think it's interesting that if IVRPD has something and we, we like it and choose to go with it as well, then you know, that can provide some background that something has happened. But, that's not to say that I think that I agree with everything in the IVRPD. Oh, policy. I know, but I'm just saying, I'm little, director, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as assuming yeah. that <laughs> you, you write this to I, respond. I mean, first off, I know yeah. that nothing that comes before this committee is going to get rubber stamped, mm -hmm. and I've said that many times. Yeah. Uh, to, as, especially at when uh, there have been people in the public who have, I, in my opinion, made that assumption. I've been very clear, this committee is not going to rubber stamp anything that is for. Mm -hmm. So, the, this well, the policy board doesn't discuss anything. We talked about that earlier. <laughs> well, okay, well, that, that is a separate issue. Yeah. This, this policy was something that I found in the IVRPD policy manual. Uh, IVRPD is a comparable special district um, in terms of the fact that it services the exact same community, the exact same boundaries with the exception of the university properties um, as we do. And we have a lot of overlap in terms of regular attendees and members of the public who come and attend our meetings. And the, the, the way that I think our board will operate in the future is in many ways similar to the way the IVRPD's board operates now. So when there was a situation at our board meeting where I was interested and curious as to why someone would have abstained on something where they didn't have a conflict of interest. I then went up and, and, I, and I looked this one up and I, you know, I, I found that it was a policy that another special district did and I felt that it was necessary to bring it before the policy committee and ask if we wanted to clarify this issue because it is something that I feel is an issue because it, I think that it puts it. I think that there are a lot of ways, or there should be a way, some sort of a formalized way, where members of the board can say, I don't necessarily agree with the majority opinion. And I think that's so necessary in Isla Vista. I don't think abstaining from a vote should be the way that that happens. And I think that there's precedent from that at other special district levels. And so. I mean, I explained we, though just that what what it was that was behind that, and it wasn't. I do, a and listen, that is not information that I had when I put this yeah. on here. And, and perhaps that should have been made clear at the board meeting if it was something that. I I I felt so horrendously silenced during that board meeting that I just stopped. I I, I mean, like I, I mean I I I, I considered I considered walking out of the meeting at one point actually, and and removing myself from the role. That was how annoyed I was at the way that that board meeting okay. went 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 well, down. Okay. Nevertheless, that was something that would be helpful for the rest of the board to know regarding mm. why someone was going to choose to abstain from something where they did not have a conflict of interest. You could have asked during the meeting. I could have. I probably would have been out of order. I mean, it, I I mean if, you, if you put your hand up, you would have been called on. You wouldn't have been <laughs> out of order. I mean, come on. But, like, this all needs to be tied here. 
Um, I don't know if we're gonna. I again, I think I this is something that we should yeah, think about because there should be there should be some <clears throat> type of thing in here. But again, this won't be an individual policy. This will be part of a larger suite of policies. So I don't mm -hmm. think we'll take. I wanted I wanted to time. bring it to our attention because it was a burgeoning issue that I saw. Okay. Fair enough. And I don't think I'll be moving anything regarding it. Neither will I. Okay. Any other policies we want to consider? Let me check this real quickly. I would see at the bottom of this I have agenda, makeup, and language, which is something we kind of already discussed regarding like how items are written I was I looked for a while to try to find some sort of a um, I don't know some sort of like a formal document that said like this is how you write an item like this is how you form your sentence from like a grammatical perspective so as to be like as objective as you possibly can like basically how to write legalese I guess but I couldn't find anything regarding that at least not in the context of how to write agenda items so I'm going to continue to look for that um, because it's something I think all our board members should know if board members are going to go through a process through the secretary where they just submit text of description and recommendations and title of what they want the agenda item to be. Um, but I, at this time, I've not found anything regarding that. If any other members of this committee find something, please reach out to me and let me know. We can't because that is... That would be right. a future policy. You're right. You're right. That please, we, can, please, we can all work please, on this uh, bring it to the outside board. of the meeting. Please bring it to the board meeting. Cool. Awesome. I don't, I don't think I have anything else for this meeting. Neither do I. Is there anything else on the agenda? Nope. And with next one is future meeting dates, including setting a regular meeting date and agenda items. Mm -hmm. Well, Which I, I worded that way mostly because I was running out of paper at the bottom of the sheet, and I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, I I know the struggle regarding. Oh, I can't just put the the disclaimer. <laughs> That's the only thing on the next piece of paper. <laughs> um, for the next, wait, are you accepting future agenda items now? Sure. Um, review of policy, compliment, compilation. Is it confirmation or compilation? Policy manual compilation. Oh, that's not supposed to be brought directly to the board? I think it is, but I think we can still ask to... After the board's seen it? I think we can. Okay. That's within the... Cool. And you were directed as, like, chairperson. Cool. cool. I mean, you think that... The, do you guys think that would be appropriate for us as the policy committee to talk about? I was, just verif I was just verifying that you understood that. I wasn't questioning your, because I mean, if you want to put it on yeah, the agenda, yeah, you yeah. get to put it on the agenda. But I was just wanting to make sure you knew that we would already have looked at it at the board, I think, by that, yeah. Okay. Oh, true. But at that, well. Let's face it. Let's have we it. We actually care. <laughs> so let's do it. Yeah. 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 None of us I are going to be wise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Throw it to another committee. Yeah. <laughs> let's keep it. Let's do it. Um, Formation. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, probably standing item four. Yep. Do you want to add anything to the including but not limited to? Earlier there was like concern about committee oh. meetings. Yeah. Um, ooh, and now again, I'm trying to anticipate what else might not fall under four. I mean, the word meetings is really broad, oh. so. Should we change it to, because right now in the first line it says, at this time we will consider making recommendations to the board of directors regarding policies and procedures of the board. Should we change that to policies and procedures of the district, including but not limited to duties of the board, roles of officers, meetings, rules of order, board meeting conduct? I like that. So. Cool. And maybe in there we should put communications and technology mm -hmm. I think I don't think it's going to be too long before we're talking Hopefully. about that yeah and if we <laughs> don't have anything to consider for communications technology then we don't have anything to consider
Um, and that's all I have for now. And we can email you specifically, like just on agenda items, right? Correct. Yeah. Are there items that we want to bring back? Hmm? Like, other than four? Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll want to discuss all of these, um, but I think all of these can be discussed under four. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I could have just done two under four, but I would just, like, well, I'll make it an agenda True, to make sure yeah. I don't forget. Okay. Um, Oh, before this meeting's over, did you want us to vote to direct you to submit the policy recommendations? Oh, let's do that. For the agenda? Okay. Under which item is this going to be four? Let's do four. Yeah. Okay. I move to direct committee chairperson Freeman to request that the recommendations of the policy committee determined in this meeting are placed on the agenda of the next regular meeting of the board for discussion and action. Do I hear a second? A second. We'll call vote, Ethan. Public. Oh, good point. I have to do that. Any members of the public? Seeing no members of the public, roll call vote. Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. Jay? Aye. Motion passes 3-0. regular meeting date so within that we're kind of working within the bi week or not by uh, first the first Tuesday and second Thursday or first Tuesday and third Tuesday <laughs> board meeting regular meeting schedule yeah and I think the um, hope would be that we fall within somewhere of that um, that would allow for a 72-hour notice um, that could that could be initiated after the board meeting takes place. Meaning, we wouldn't want to have a meeting the day after the board meeting, or we wouldn't want to continue this thing even where it's two days after the board meeting because it's a regular meeting schedule. So we would have had to put out the agenda like before the board meeting took place. So I. And Thursday is just orange good in general since IVOTD meets on Thursdays. Second and fourth Tuesday? Second and Tuesday. Um, so we will have to cancel the. Let's see, hold on. One, two, three. So we have to cancel this next week because that would set a meeting for the 28th. Of March, yeah, we would also have to cancel um, the eleventh meeting because there's a special meeting scheduled for the board of directors then, unless unless it's during the day, unless it's during the day. But maybe like the six p.m. Maybe we've been let, doing three let, p.m. You know what? Right. I'm, before I say anything, I should look at my calendar and see what and I, I will be available like. on the fourth Thursday of Tuesday. April. Tuesday, for, I won't be available. Then. Okay. sorry. No, not at all. Tuesday. Yeah, so I I would prefer if we try not to do the the second and fourth Tuesdays. Okay. I know that Is there another Wednesdays are very favorable to me. Does anyone have qualms with Wednesdays? Wednesdays are gonna end up really sucking for me every single so first of all, I cannot do Wednesday at six. Okay. Um uh, because I so what it is is that I, I teach a class next quarter, Wednesday at six. Is um, it history forty six? Yes. Are you in my class now? I just I just had to ask. I had to ask <laughs> I'm staring at Wednesday at six, history forty six. <laughs> the history department was like, Jay, we need you. Yeah. You're drafted. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I took a class with Randy Evenstein this quarter. I just took the finals. Oh, you taught it? So, 
No, he's not teaching. Oh, he's I took okay. the class with him, so right, right. <laughs> <laughs> there's precedent. <laughs> um, yeah, so Wednesday at 6, I'm busy, which means that I get the, I mean, a fairly hard cut off on that because I have to be on campus to teach the class, but it also mm -hmm. means that I'm just going to be like mentally on Wednesday being like I'm trying to prepare for two things and it's going to be really Yeah, okay. Maybe for maybe me. Mondays would be best because... But it's only for one quarter. We could always mm -hmm. adjust that later. We, we can always adjust. Yeah. yeah. What do... Do you folks have issues with Mondays at all? If we did the second and fourth Monday. Uh, let me check something real quick. Every now and then I will... I will have issues where I'm like gone for a weekend to get back on a Monday, but I can always get back on Monday at 6 p.m. because I know from experience that I always succeed in getting back just in time from Ross class at 6. <laughs> so if we were to do an evening on a Monday. Uh -huh. But I that also, that's not that's every now and then, and I don't know if it'll even happen next quarter. Uh -huh. So okay. if, if we just decide, if we just did it, it's fine. Yeah, Mondays are kind of a... Uh, hard for me. Sorry that I've got that class next quarter on Wednesday, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's just for one quarter and then it's... Um, if, we're, if we're thinking, we've talked about six o'clock for all the things that we've been considering thus far. Well, no, the issue that I have with Wednesday, my, my problem is going to be that I'm going to be like, uh -huh. I know I'm going to be frantically trying to deal with my lecture yeah, in my yeah, head. Yeah. No, I understand. To be like, but I'm saying we know. have been thinking we'll schedule the meeting to start at 6 o'clock. Oh, I've been, uh, I've been thinking or, about it. Like when we were talking about the second and fourth Tuesday, I was actually thinking 3 p.m. because that was where this meeting was. But that's, uh, okay. I already forgot what the issue with that one was. Uh, I, I know have, you had two dates you couldn't do, but other than that. Yeah. But I have a class at 3.30 on on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so that's only for next quarter, but um, I would think that maybe... What about Fridays? Fridays are... Fridays are... About equivalently fine to me for as one Wednesday. Yeah. Do you want to start it? Wait, as, as Tuesday? I'm sorry, as Tuesday. Okay. No, as Monday. As Monday. Yeah, okay. they're about equivalently as good to me as Monday, which is that which is that every now and then I will like, just like, like I'm leaving tomorrow on Friday and riding back on... Actually, this time I'm riding back on Sunday, but like Sundays we've gone for like a hackathon. But I don't know if they're going to be any of those, so let's just ignore that. Like, it's, yeah, Fridays, Fridays are generally okay. like this. You want to well, on a Friday? A Friday would certainly work for me. It, the earlier, the better. Yeah, earlier, the better here as well. And so here the only question, oh yeah, so the question with Friday is, is are we looking for Friday the first and third Friday or the second and fourth Friday? Um, my inclination would be that we would look for second Fourth. Okay, that means that anything that we want to put on the. Yeah, that would be tough mm, for getting. Yeah, 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 yeah. We could also go. Which is actually why I mentioned the Tuesday one was because so it was like so beautifully halfway between. Yeah. Wait, all right. It seems like so our Tuesday conflict is pretty situational, right? Like just this, like next month, like you're kind of busy on, or the eleventh is yeah, especially I mean, I'm busy on the twenty fifth. The Tuesday. That could be, we could get around that by doing like a six o'clock. Wait, do you have a class on Tuesday though is what it was? Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. you said Tuesday was the special meeting. And? Well it is, and well if we did it on Tuesday, then we would have to cancel the next two meetings of the policy committee and schedule a special meeting to make up for anything that we actually wanted to do. I mean, we could try to do Mondays. We could do the Monday at 6 because you were saying you think that even if you are... You know, I, that's probably not even going to happen. So let's just assume that I'm here Mondays and Fridays. So for Mondays, what, which ones would you undo? Which ones of the month? Um, the second and fourth second for and fourth nearly day. halfway, yeah. The second and fourth Monday. So that would be the 10th and the 24th for, for April. Uh-huh. And it would be... 
the 8th and the 22nd for May. And what time would you want to do that? Uh, let's, let's say 5 p.m. Okay. I, I think we can try that schedule. Okay. What is our regular meeting? So hopefully we can, I guess we can amend the regular meeting schedule if we need it to. <laughs> And Jay, so, this is customary for special district committees to have a regular meeting? Uh, did I, I, I thought that at the last board meeting it was brought up that it would likely be the case that on all of the committee meetings we would talk about having a regularly meeting. Oh, no, that was brought up. Okay, well, that was I why I added it, that was why I added it. <laughs> and I don't think it was mandated to any, anyone. Um, like, uh, my yeah. understanding is that anything that is Brown Act and standing is supposed to have a regular meeting, but I might be wrong. That's actually my understanding, too. Interesting. Okay. okay. So second, not, yeah, second and fourth Mondays at 5 p.m. Is this a motion? Do we have to have a motion? Yeah. So I really, do quick, have really have quick, quick, I want to see the IDRPD's policy, see if they have anything like that. If anything, I think it's good for us to try to set a regular schedule just for our own continuity's sake and like scheduling my life. <laughs> All right, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going above and beyond, we're going above and beyond. Is that I move to adopt or I move to? Oh, yeah, and, and we might want to have like. I move to set. March. March 27th. That's right. <laughs> Right. We're just starting in April or something. Yeah, to begin in April 2015. Hopefully 17. 17. Oh. <laughs> You're two years off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I move to establish the second and fourth Mondays of a calendar month at 5 p.m. to be the regular meetings of the policy committee beginning in April 2017 taking place in the community room located at 970 Embarcadero Del Mar, <laughs> Alvisa. Favor second? Second. The unanimous to public. Seeing none. Roll call vote. Ethan? Aye. Spencer? Aye. Jay? Aye. Motion passes 3 0. Okay. So, is there anything else we need to do? Okay, moving on to agenda item number six is where we move the agenda item which we will adjourn the meeting. Uh, do we, I saw something, we had a motion on one of them to, to adjourn, one of these things, did a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. okay. Members of the public, roll call vote, Ethan. Aye. Spencer. Aye. J.I. Motion passes 3-0. I adjourn this meeting at 8.02 p.m.